and welcome to X Penguin, the only show with this man's beautiful face. Because today's guest is the benevolent, the wonderful, the sexual Arch Toasty. Say hello, Arch Toasty. Hello. Hello, Arch Toasty. Nah, no, never mind. Hey, Pseudo Shred's also here today. He's on floating lips. Say hello, Pseudo Shred. Hello, Pseudo Shred. And I thought you were talking to me because I have my camera on. Now. Yes, you don't have your camera on. <laughs> Oh, I turned it off. That's right. Like, Pseudo Shred literally has a camera on his laptop that is covered up with a sticker. So he turns his camera on and it's some like brown light is all I get from it. Just brown light. Um, anyway. Brown light. <laughs> anyway. That's, kind of that's like, actually like... me. That's that's really what I look like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm going to do my whole intro thing, but Nusu has just got in chat. Nobody wants to be on the show anymore since they saw Arch Toasty. <laughs> Because he was. Yeah. <laughs> we, we did say that Nusu was the most beautiful man in Linux, but now Arch Toast is here, so he's been usurped, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Although you guys should have like uh, like a dance-off or something, and we'll decide who does it best. Well, Welcome, we'll ladies and gentlemen. We'll just play Just Dance. Just, just Dance, yeah. yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to X Penguin, the show where we talk about stuff that we played this week. Um, well, some of us do. And uh, we talk about, because, you know, Pseudo Shred only ever plays Hearthstone. Um, and we also talk about things we saw in the Linux news that was interesting to us. Um, this is not a news show. This is not a topics discussion. This is our shit indulgence for about two hours. Um, so thank you for joining us. Those of you who are new to the show, we do this every fortnight live on Twitch. Please join us there. And then it goes on YouTube the next day. And there's an audio feed on the RSS. Um, and for those of you that have been here a long time, welcome. I can see in chat we've got Offensive Polygon, Paul, Liberty Paul M, Nusui, uh, more Nusui, Nightbot's here. Hey, Nightbot, how you doing? And there's a bunch more people that haven't spoken, so we won't out the lurkers. But uh, <clears throat> how have we been, gentlemen? The lurkers. Lurkers. So, gentlemen, uh, I think we should start the show with the question we always ask at the beginning of every show. Um, Pseudo Shred, what did you play this week? I actually have games I played this week. Should we talk about the most important one, which is obviously Argenta Mage? <sighs> so help me God. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I've played Argenta Mage for 10 hours because of Nisui's... Dis- Nisui? Why am I saying Nisui? I'm just yeah. reading Nisui. I'm saying what I'm reading again. Darn you, Nisui. Hell. I had this part. Nisui we talked about this last night. I say aloud whatever <laughs> word I'm looking at. Like It's like an illness I've got. We, we, <laughs> yeah. I'm so sick. A fucking pseudo shred. I'm not gonna look at anything else. Talking about <laughs> Argenta Mage. So we, I feel like I've played ten hours by listening to his description. But um, yeah, I think th- I'm just over it now. I'm over it. But you did also no. play Oxygen Not Included, didn't you? Pseudo shred. Oxygen Not Included. I actually picked it up because it was on sale for like twenty percent off. So it's twenty twenty US monies. Oh my god, it's such what? a good game. What US money is the game? Yeah, U.S. money's the game. US Oxygen money. not okay. included is, is completely separate. Yeah, but, yeah. Completely separate. Yeah, so Oxygen not included is, you've described it to me as a side-on version of RimWorld. Um, and I must say, it is an well, interesting-looking game. It looks like it's hand-drawn or something, which is interesting. Well, and, and to be to be exact, I've said that it, it's basically RimWorld that's side-on, but right. has loads of personality. Right. Because... Okay. Hmm. RimWorld to me seems it just seems much more serious. Like you, you try to be as efficient as possible with everything. Oxygen not included just has the it just oozes personality. Even even watching they're called dupes. So you have your the, the people that you have in your asteroid you print from a three D printer and they're called dupes, duplicates. Wait, is that not how people are made anyway? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, how, I mean that's that's where I got my baby from. It was the three D printer mommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway carry yeah. on sorry carry um on. but even it, it's great because uh, there's a there's a day night cycle and at night they go to sleep and just watching them sleep is just like one of the cutest things ever because they curl up like dogs or cats on this bed and they like whistle so so cutely it's it's ridiculously cute absolutely love it and i've personally watched a lot of videos about oxygen not included before i even bought it i knew i wanted to buy it because it just looks so good right and the one thing that i didn't understand was people were saying there's a a massive amount of depth to this game um like almost to the level of rim world i wouldn't say it's as 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 crazy as rim world Um, but one of the things that that even devs have said is you basically choose how deep you want to get into it and my whole right. thought is, like, how, how do you have a game that does that? And most people that you watch, there's three different speeds. You can speed it up. And they, they you know, 
they try to maximize absolutely everything and they go at a breakneck speed trying to get things done. I was actually playing it a bit different. I was taking it slow and steady, you know, taking my time. And it was actually a very relaxing thing. I think I've played three hours of the game and, you know, I've barely scratched the surface of it just because, again, I'm taking my time and going slow. And I'm, it, I am I personally love it. It's It's probably... My favorite game of 2017, and I've only played. Three You've only hours played three. Or You've only played three games yeah. in 2017, Sudo. You've literally oh, well, played yeah, Argentum true. Age, an hour and a half of uh, Awesome Noughts, and this. So it's not. Yeah. It's, I can't take. I mean, I know like this time of year, <laughs> YouTubers and streamers are supposed to talk about their favorite game of the year, but you've only played yeah. three. So I, I don't think we need to do. Yeah. We can do a top ten. It's just silence for half an hour. Um. So yeah. is it? So is it? Because I'm looking at this. And it looks like a cartoon. I mean, it doesn't really look that much like like rim world for instance so i'll take it no. like there's a lot of like interactivity with the objects and there's menus the individual menus the objects and stuff the same as rim world yeah yeah every so every little thing you do and like there's different types of atmosphere there's different types of of stone and and minerals and stuff to to harvest um every single technology you know needs researched and each of them has, like, it's amazing the depth. Like, if you click on something, uh, an item or even a background or something, you can go to a statistic that shows, you know, how much heat it's putting out in, in watts, uh, how much, you know, like, O2 it can consume, you know, all the different things that it can make, the outputs of it, like, like how it all... Fo it's... To, to actually do it efficiently would be ridiculously in-depth. Like there's right. just so much depth to it, it's it's mind blowing on on the level of RimWorld. So one of the things I have to ask then is: is there a market for both games? Like, is it either or? Is it pick a team, or is it literally like both games have a home? Or like, I've got RimWorld, should I just ignore this, or is this still worth picking up? I mean, I've never played RimWorld, but I've watched people uh, play both. I think there's room for both. They they kind of go in different directions. RimWorld, as I said, is much more serious and is much more focused on um, combat, dying. survival, and yeah, and this this is very cute, and it, it actually is going with a, um, you know, set up efficient manufacturing processes and, and making sure you have enough oxygen, and each building puts out, like, certain other things that you have to deal with, and it's it's kind of a give and take, but there's really no combat in it. There's really no um, uh, randomization that, that RimWorld has. It's just, hey, you have these little, let's, you know, just say, like, little hamster people that you just, just don't let them suffocate I'd, to death. Don't I'd like them... to think that I'm a hamster person, really, on the inside. Yeah, so this is right up your alley. Yeah, human I'm hamster i'm a human hamster yeah. person yeah human hamster person. and but they're adding they're adding so much more to it like every what was it like every two weeks i think we get more updates and oh, wow. if you've if you've ever liked one of the one of the things that they recently added was automation so when we played mind test or i played minecraft i was always personally interested in the automation side of things of like okay how do i make you know like a, a place for people to dump their ores and stuff and then automatically refine it into what i need and then have it shipped to boxes like that's the kind of automation that they have going on here like you have to deal with electrical wires going everywhere water going everywhere like you can refine different types of atmosphere you can refine different types of ores and you can automate like crazy so amount how does how does so how does the controls work do i control this like do i control an individual dude or is it like a god sim where you just dig out how, how's what's the controls like yeah it's it's more of a god sim again like rim world where you give general orders yeah, you don't, and no you can control. tell them no direct control you can actually click on like if someone gets stuck you can click on them and like put a little target and say hey go over here and and they'll eventually go over there but it's not like you possess one and then you you know have you you, you do everything you kind of give hey dig this out hey build this here and you can set different priorities one being the lowest nine being the highest five is the default um and then eventually someone will get to it and it also has jobs so like in rim world you can assign you know a specific person yeah, to, to only cook yeah and this each person has things that they're good at things that they're bad at and you can assign them based on things like that um and they have these adorable little cartoons that they do for each release, which I yeah, absolutely I've, I've love. Yeah, I've seen them now. Actually, I, yeah. 
I would love to see an oxygen not included cartoon because this reminds me of like the old school like Tom and Jerry um, uh, Looney Tunes kind of cartoons where they don't really say anything, but it's this it's it's this great comedic humor that comes across. And all of their they're originally going to voice act it, but they decided to someone brought in a theremin one day and they're like, this is great. So all of the dupes speak in theremin. Nice, nice. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, looking at the looking at all the videos and stuff on the Steam page because I haven't really looked that deep into this game. It's one that other people have told me to look at a lot, and I haven't really sort of. I don't know why. It just hasn't really been something that's appeared on my radar. Um, yeah, it does. Look, it does look kind of funny, and as you say, it looks a little bit more lighthearted than RimWorld because RimWorld's yeah. a brutal slug of death. Um, also. I don't know how to point this out, but we can hear you breathe again, so I don't think you need to turn Damn your it. dial down. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> Stop breathing for about two hours. You'll be fine. He's just um, so excited about yeah. oxygen not included. He's, just, he's like, all worked oxygen up. not included. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds, sounds like you're in the wind again, only slightly. Um, but yeah, no, it looks it looks interesting. I like, Is there a limit to the size of a, a base you can create? Because um, I'm looking at all the pictures here, and nothing seems to imply a size here. They've got no sense of scale. Is this something that... Well, just gets bigger i mean there, there is there is a map uh just like rim world you know you are defined by a certain size but you basically have to mine out this asteroid and it's massive like ridiculously yeah. massive i've seen people at cycle 500 which like a cycle is a day yeah. um, over 500 and they still haven't explored the entire thing okay that's interesting that's interesting is there any dangers in the asteroid like natural caves and stuff to attack you and or like just just a big old there HK? are so there are some like little bug creatures that every once in a while will attack you if you come across them. Like one of them is a, is a hatch. Uh, I think in one of the little cartoons you could see that the hatch eating little pieces off the floor. They normally don't attack you though, so I don't know what causes that. Uh, but the biggest thing that you have to worry about is like breaking through a wall and and water flooding your base, or breaking through a wall and now you have chlorine flooding your base that's moving all the oxygen out and your dupes are suffocating to death. So again, it's not like random events like how many world. How many dupes have you killed? I haven't killed any yet. Ha! <laughs> Give it time. Again, Give yeah, time. that's well, that's what I told someone is like oxygen not included is like Game of Thrones. <laughs> Everyone dies eventually. So <laughs> fair enough. Um, also, can we shine a light here on offensive polygon in chat that when I talked about being a hamster, he told me I have the cheek patches for it, which I'm totally offended by. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what that meant. I, I completely... And uh, also, you're a half dog. Oh. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> so the, Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, this um, is that. The game, the game was by Clay, though, so a lot of people mm. probably know Clay for things yeah, like... Um, um, the hell's that game? Mark oh, of the Ninja is one of them. Oh, but the... the um, don't right. Starve Together. Don't, don't Starve? starve. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't starve, starve, don't starve Mark of the Ninja, Shank, Shank 2... Uh, Hot Lava, Grifflands, Invisible Ink, which was really good as well. Um, yeah, there's, there's, so a, there's is, enough that yeah, uh, you should know them. They they have a track record of making these amazingly polished personal, you know, great personality games, and they just, in my opinion, again, I'm biased because I've been watching this for a long time. They they nail this one. They they hit this out of the park, in my opinion. That's cool. So that's bring an endorsement. Uh, so that's priced eighteen pound ninety nine. Um, it's got really low requirements <laughs> as well. It's like it's quite low requirements. Um, you need Ubuntu 14 and yes. 4, 2 gigahertz. Apparently, it'll run a 4 gig of RAM. And then uh, developers need to stop doing this shit. The fucking it won't run a 4 gig of RAM because your operating system is going to take about 2 gig. So then the game's actually going to be running 2 gig of RAM if you actually read this, which is just fucking anyway. I'm going to make a whole well, video about this. Well, you say that, but like I have an Intel NUC, uh, which is just this tiny little computer, you know, and I think I have 4 gig of RAM in it. It's Intel Integrated Graphics. And it did run. I wouldn't want to play it that way. But There's the, the problem. But the, isn't it? Yeah, and and the bigger your base gets, the more of a performance hit you take. But it, it will run, and they're they're doing performance optimizations all the time. It's it's honestly, if you like uh, survival sim games that just ooze personality and cuteness and fun, I can't recommend Oxygen Not Included enough. It's it's just absolutely brilliant. That's well uh rather than going to arch toasty next anyway i think we should talk about rim world which is the game i've been playing because i think it's kind of like goes from uh goes on from oxygen not included quite nicely so we're not skip we're not skipping you toasty we're coming back to you don't worry <laughs> don't oh, worry okay. perfect, um perfect yeah o- oxygen yeah oxygen not included um sounds 
like as we said a very similar game but um i actually arch toasty sent me a copy of ringworld um so it's even more topical uh but ringworld rimworld um rimworld is uh is the exact sounds like a very similar game but it is unforgiving brutal and a descent into madness and death um which is why i like it it's it's uh the game is oh my gosh it's so it's just it's just brutal i mean you've you've played it quite a bit as well haven't you toasty i mean you've got quite a few hours logged in it as well I do. Uh, I love this game. I love this game because I used to play Dwarf Fortress mm -hmm. uh, like a long time ago, and it was just so unpolished, and they never added any uh, better texture packs yeah. to that game. And then when this game came out, I was like, wow, this is everything I've ever wanted out of Dwarf Fortress. Uh, yeah. And it just, all the mechanics are there. It's just super polished, and it's really fun to play. It has a huge learning curve. But other than that, it's, uh, it's really Well, fun I mean, you say that. But I mean, I've played eight hours of it, and I feel like I've got a pretty good understanding of how it works. Um, I mean, obviously, there's there's things I haven't picked up on the way, which I'll pick up. But I think my basic understanding of the game is quite good after eight, well, nearly nine hours of it. Um, so it's not as steep as I thought from looking at the screenshots. I mean, look at the screenshots. I was like, because if anyone doesn't know, the basic principle is you start off with three dudes that have crashed. Uh, three settlers that have crashed and you have the most basic technology i mean it's in a future so like they're like they drill and and they, they they have technology like they have all the skills they're not like they're not like they're not like cave people they're like they're educated people across the board uh and then you then take uh you then take all the basic like survival elements like chop wood gather like get water get food start planting crops um and you try basically not to let them die and expand your town as you go um obviously picking up people as they go sometimes people crash sometimes they wander in um you start like building up building infrastructure the idea is to have a functioning town and then i believe the end game is to move on to another tile and just like move into the next tile of loss which is like a fresh start but with some of your resources um which is a long way off for me a long way off and uh, your selection originally when you start your base you get to pick on this world map and you get to select whereabouts you want to start so you can start in a desert or a rainforest which is my favorite or a mountainous region or a water region and then from there you can you know you obviously you have the starting bonuses or, or negatives that, that that applies but um it is it is not the light-hearted fun that that um that i think we're going to be getting from uh from, from oxygen not included it is i think it's fair to say it's designed to be like no we're trying to kill your dudes like the game's actively trying to murder them um, which I kind of like because you know where you stand, you know, the, the, the AI is the enemy. <laughs> well, and, and I think it should be said that, that this game was actually, I don't know if it still is, but it was developed by one guy mm. that yeah. added in all this stuff. And, and people are easy or quick to jump on the fact that early access a lot of times is a huge joke. Without early access, we probably have never have a game like this. And again, yeah. for what, what, how much was it? Like, I think it's like twenty three, US dollars. Uh, twenty three, uh, twenty three seventy nine English. For for a game like this, I've seen people literally get thousands of hours out of thirty dollars. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, offensive polygons telling me I've only just scratched the surface, which is fair. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I mean, like, I, but I think that's the thing with games like this, though. You can feel like you're competent at the most basic level, and then as the as the um, mechanics get added and layered, you like as you you go, I learned this, I'll do this, I learned this, I'll. It's so you're constantly learning, but you don't. But the actual initial curve to start playing the game isn't as big as people say. I mean, obviously, there's still loads more for me to pick up. This is this is definitely one of those games where it's easy to pick up but difficult to master mm. because there's so many layers to it. Like it seems like on is the same way in that it seems very easy to to just go, but then you start to notice all this little nuance and intricacies in the game and how deep the rabbit hole goes. It, it, they're incredibly deep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it That's is. I my only the only like vague criticism I have with RimWorld. Um, is that you go from like I've got some wood to I have a fully functioning solar panel electric grid quite quickly. That seems to like sneak up on you quite quite fast. It's like it's like I've got some wood, I've got some machine parts. I'll just build a massive solar array. Um, it just seems like a step, but like a stretch because I didn't even think about making the solar array until someone on stream. I think it was Arch Toast actually said on stream like you should make a solar array, and I was like, oh, thank fuck, I don't have to like slog my way up to this level of technology. It was nice that he did it, but at the same the time, stones. yeah. But it was it was a nice it was nice it was nicer I could, but it felt like quite the leap. Um, I also weirdly kind of like the fact that there's no narrative to interrupt my just sandboxing. You know, he doesn't try to shoehorn in a bad story on top of what's a fun game already, because things like a prison architect could be fun 
without the narrative but then the narrative on top of that almost distracts from the from the really nice mechanics they've got um so i do like they've kept it a pure core experience which is nice i, I think you feel like it's nice anyway um i do want to get to the point where what, this whole town what, uh, what attracts me a lot about this game is the personalities like the different people that you can get and the personality traits that they can have and the way that they like intermingle with one another mm, yeah uh, and just the way that that sets up for just unique challenges and stuff like that yeah. well and it it seems to have like again i've watched a lot of hours of this i don't i don't own the game so i've never played it but one of the guys pointed out that he had this character you know after after they got into a battle he was he was injured and then he noticed that whenever the guy would try to do anything he would pass out so he looked closer at the stats and basically i, I don't know the numbers i'm just going to say in general like the guy's intelligence was a five and then he took a bullet to the brain oh wow and the fact that it's it's yeah. it's that deep and then the guy's intelligence was permanently dropped to like a three so whenever he was told to do anything it apparently takes one point of intelligence so he'd drop to a two and then instantly pass out <laughs> like that's, it's, that's it's, yeah things yeah, like that's, that that's great yeah. yeah that's the sort of thing that he does yeah i i i am very much very much looking forward to spending tomorrow afternoon playing more of this game i really it's like one of the things where i've been at work all week and i've been streaming sort of more like upbeat games of an evening sort of you know so i don't fall asleep at the desk but um <laughs> but uh, seriously i'm really looking forward to sort of like getting deep into this tomorrow deep into it. i want to make one of these actual townships i keep seeing on the screenshots where they've got like everything works properly you know they've got like an infrastructure indoor growing of plants as well so you know that sounds amazing yeah. which is really weird but uh <laughs> but yeah and there's this game has amazing mod support. The community has made incredible mods. I've seen, I've seen a uh, like a Jedi mod that gives your people Jedi powers, and you can pick light or dark, and then their personalities adjust to that. And, oh my god, this game's crazy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was yep. gonna say it's like the rabbit hole just is never ending. Yep, absolutely. I I'm 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 very very smitten by RimWorld. Um, I I do think the name is like like it's just like it's so many jokes with the name Rim though isn't there I mean like it's just it's just hard not to make jokes about the name of the game I mean they've even got like a butthole sheriff's badge in the O in the title of the game which is like <laughs> it's like they want me to make Rim jokes you know um, <laughs> so I do feel like they're going their way to make it easy nice. which is nice but yeah it's it's a really good game and uh, I think maybe the fact I'm playing Rim World is why I don't care about Oxygen Not Included I think like maybe because I've already deep in the one the other one's less appealing to me so maybe when I come out the other side of my Rim World binge let's, I'll want to play it let, let's be honest you just like Arch Toasty more than you like me well I like most people more than like you Sudo oh it's just, okay <laughs> so, I mean, that's well established this year. I've liked every guest more than you <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> uh, Kenseiko points out that the game was actually kickstarted first as well. So oh yeah, so it's kickstarted. Uh, that's what access. Interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, I had heard that. I completely forgot about that. Thank you for reminding us, Kenseiko. But again, it's a success story of kickstart and early access. And Abs one guy, I believe. Yeah. I'm I'm almost positive positive at this one point. Like, I don't know if it still is. It was one guy. Twenty years time, this guy's gonna look exactly like Stallman, isn't he? <laughs> this one dude's gonna be like, all I do is RimWorld. You don't need anything else, just RimWorld. It's like, I've got probably not wrong about that. God, I hope this one dude that made RimWorld, I really hope he's like a sh an old timey sheriff with like the great big mustache and the leather jacket and the six shooter. Oh, God, I really hope he's like that. I'm gonna be disappointed if he's not. I'm gonna go and Google and find out. <laughs> but uh, he is not. Yeah. He's actually, wow. He's what? actually a very clean cut, uh, shaved guy. Here you go. Throw on a link to his Twitter. Tynan sorry, sorry. Um, I'm, uh, is this safe for stream? Yeah, it's Twitter. Oh my god, no, come on. He's got a whole Western look to him. Look at him. He could put a cowboy hat on that bad boy, and he's he's right there. He's like, he's Sheriff Tyrant Sylvester. I'm going to follow him while I'm here, because he's cool. Um, Yeah, but uh, there we go. For those of you that can't see it, because I just realized I had the wrong thing open. But uh, there you go. Like, yeah, he's, he's like, he could quite easily, he could quite easily be a... Uh, a cowboy you just like you, you, you convince the modern haircut throws you off but now nah, he's all right um i pressed the follow button <laughs> there anyway but <laughs> that's the main thing so uh, as as we've reached the end of this bit let's talk about what some of the arch toast has played also for those of you who don't know because we're really bad at explaining who our guests are arch toasty is a streamer and community member and all around linux advocate um that is also the most beautiful man in linux as we've well established um yeah Mind you, mind you, like Samsung is quite pretty as well. He's in chat, so we have to get Samsung on the show at some point as well. We only have pretty guests from now on. 
Only pretty guests. Only pre- <laughs> pretty guests. So uh, you've been playing. You you wanted to talk about Night in the Woods. Is that right? Night in the Woods. Yes, I uh, played it and I actually finished it. Uh, it was quite an experience. Uh, I went into this game thinking that I was not going to like it at all. Uh, so totally no expectations, but I wanted to play something that was just totally different because normally I would never, ever play anything like this. Uh, See, it's funny uh, actually, because your like Sudo's game and your game are games I haven't played, which is really unusual because um, I play a lot of games. And uh, 100% yeah, this... I picked this game because it was on your wish list and I knew that you hadn't played it yet. <laughs> he just wanted to oh my in your god face, you bastard is that is that really what you did oh no i uh, well i just i wanted to pick a game that you hadn't played before or that no one had played before so i'm just feel like all right well oh, and you know, so extra special that's terrible i love it that's brilliant it, there's i can't remember the name of it in itch.io this actually i don't know if it's a prequel to this but there's a free game by the same developer that relates to this have you checked that one out what happened is, is uh, most of the way through my playthrough, uh, the game got op- uh, like updated with like uh, some other autumn, like weird autumn, something like that, which actually added those games into the game. Uh, oh, they're like cool. the prequels and the other things that are actually like inside the game now. I haven't played them uh, because they're just a- I haven't restarted the story and started over, which are now a part of the whole story now. Uh, uh, so, so <laughs> uh, now uh, this is on. Now, this, what was about to say though? This this game is on my wish list, as you well know, apparently. Um, and the thing that like I've heard about it is that all the characters are like real people. They're like they're like proper, really well written, well realized people that also happen to be cartoon animals. Um, but the, apparently the writing's really real, while the story itself is really, like, while the, the artwork is really sort of odd and strange. Is that sort of the vibe we get from it? Well, I didn't realize whenever I played this game how hard it would be to try to explain it to someone else and not give away everything that the game's about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the games talk about the podcast. I agree. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> it's uh it, it, this is um it's a very story like based game and yes all of the characters are incredibly well written they're just like real human beings like yeah of course they're like cats and and dogs and 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 like meese people and stuff like that but uh that's it, just yeah it, the writing within the story is so well done like the overall story itself like i'm not going to spoil anything for anybody especially since i totally recommend getting this game because it's it's just really, really good. And if, like, if you just want a story that you can play through, I like. There's really no challenge in this game. But if you want like a good story to play through, uh, this is it. I mean, it'll hit you in all the right feels. It'll just it, it touch. It's I don't have like, any. And you're just like, oh man. So well, because by the end of the game, you're just you're so invested. It, yeah, like engaged with the characters that you hang out with. Like May is the name of the cat. She's like a 20 year old dropout. Uh, like if we were to look at it in like real standards, she basically drops out of uh, college to go back to her hometown where she's realizing that kind of everybody is moving on. Like the town that she was in used to be like a boom town. So everybody was like, oh, jobs everywhere and blah, blah, blah. But now it's starting to like die down and everybody's realizing that, you know, it's not the, what it used to be. And all she wants is uh, for, you know, everything to be like the way that it was. And it's like kind of a coming of age story and stuff like that. But I know that, you know, that, that might turn some people off, but this is actually like, it's one of the greatest coming of age stories I've seen in a long time. So, but like I said, it's just all the characters are so well written. Like they, they are actual like people and like human beings. Like they'd be like somebody that you'd know. Yeah, that's, that's, well, that's, I... <laughs> this is no way. Sorry. Chat's just written, stop breathing into the mic, pseudo dog. Sorry. I literally seconds ago <sighs> typed into chat, pseudo is vadering again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll get we'll get you right we'll get you we'll get you right um yeah what? so i linked i linked in the chat uh hio lost constellation and longest night i believe they're related um i th- i think one is a prequel or something like that uh but they're free i believe so i would recommend checking them out right. but toasty how have you have you completed the story how long did it take to complete because looking at the numbers on this game some people have over 30 hours and that's not that's not like a one off there's a whole bunch of people that are high 20s low 30s i was going to say now the game if you just do it and go like straight through it it takes about 12 hours okay that's good good stream game then yeah. so uh, it's 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 and it definitely yeah. has replay value <clears throat> You know, like once you watch bucks. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like this review. This There's a review well, I mean, here, it's guys. basically like, just think of it as also half of that investment is like 
going towards like a really great story that you'll remember for a long time like going to go see a movie oh yeah i think i think there's two people too much focus far too much on how long a game takes to play against how much value you got from it because i can play a hundred hours of a clicker and get no value out of that whatsoever just kill a hundred hours or a game like this where it's telling me a really personal story i'm gonna go and play more than the price of this game to see star wars in a few hours you know that's two out two and a half hours long so i think that to 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 put like the, the the dollar amount versus the hour played isn't really like it doesn't really add up anymore in, in modern gaming but there is a review here for 20 hours of the game when the guy goes best game i played all year millennial depression simulator <laughs> yeah that sounds great that sounds great <laughs> well like what turns people off i think is like the first maybe like hour or two that you have to play this game because uh it's very boring uh <laughs> it's very, very, this game's great <laughs> it's boring it's it, it's really beautiful and it's like you're kind of like what is the point it's where you're trying to get your bearings and try to be like what the hell is the point here like what are we supposed to be doing and then you realize that oh it's not like an action game or like a platformer game or like an rpg it's like it's a a visual novel yeah let's it's yeah it's like let's walk around let's talk to people let's get to understand the backstory and just it's about exploring like if you go through the game just trying to do like the regular storyline and not yeah you you play the story not the mechanics yeah yeah, that's it. yeah, then you're going to get a very cut and dry, very boring uh, story and stuff like that. So, Oh, so like the things you do in the game actually affect the story to some extent? Well, like your actions not really. It. It's just they, they flesh out the story so that everything it, it just makes for a way more satisfying ending. Like you can play the game without talking to anybody else in the like whole city. Um, of course, you're just only going to talk to your friends and know what they are and then just get like the little Just like real life. Like, yeah, you're not going to understand, like, the main, like, well, not, like, the main, but, like, the back arc of, like, the town, like, slowly diminishing and where everybody kind of wants to get get out of the town and it's, like, d- being destroyed. And there's also, like, I'm trying so hard not to give anything away. No, it's great. It's great. Yeah. Storyline. So, um, but, uh, no, this, yeah, you know it, what? It's this, a great game. The fact that you're having such a hard time explaining it has sold me on it. Like, I love the idea that, like, this game has got such a strong story that you're terrified of spoiling it. You actually, like, genuinely are worried about spoiling it. I think that's a testament to how strong the story is. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Anybody, gonna, I don't know if anybody in chat played, sale. but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Maybe wait for it to go on sale. Before well, the Christmas buy? sale is coming uh, up in a couple could, of weeks, so by a week. But, but again, you can you could check out the other two that yeah. are free on Niche to see if you like it. Because the only reason that I knew even what you were talking about is from the other games. Again, I've never played it, but Nez Chan, uh, she she talks highly of these, and it seems like the other two are considerably shorter, but have the same art style and have that same very story driven, emotional investment type of thing. So might as well start with those on itch. And if, if it's, you know, you want more of that content, you can always dive into the Steam uh, version that Arch Toasty is talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, I'll probably just wait for the Steam sale and just pick it up to both because it does sound exactly like something I'd enjoy. And, and yeah, and uh, as I play visual novels anyway, the, uh, like playing a game that's all story and all text probably won't be much of a culture shock for me. Is it one to stream though, Toasty, or is it one that's like probably best experienced alone? uh i would say that it's yeah i I streamed the first part of it whenever i first started playing and it's fun i guess but i guess it's yeah i'd say it's better to play by yourself only because you'll get more out of it and then having to read it with uh, you know like out loud while you're streaming and stuff like that because they they opted for to not have voice actors in the game and i think that was a great choice because the text box like they they expel like so much more like they're, they're yeah expressive yeah, so. this this is like there's a lot of people that saying like visual novels should have voice acting in them, and uh, I I'm I'm someone who, I think like the opposite. I think they're better because they're text, and I think like a lot of games like this sometimes they want they want voice acting, but they can't afford to pay professionals, so they end up getting janky voice acting, which takes away from the story, not adds to it. So yeah, I'm I'm also in favor of that. Oh, as long yeah, as it's got a good soundtrack. That's instant immersion breaking when you have a shitty voice actor. You can't be taken seriously. Yeah. Even though yeah. you know they might try so hard. Oh yeah. They, and they're that probably really lovely people. It's, like yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it can destroy a game. It can completely destroy a game. But yeah, this is great. This yeah. is great. This is. I, I. I just. I still can't get over the fact that you literally went out your way to find a game I hadn't played though. That's. That's. <laughs> wow. That's Best great. guest ever. <laughs> Best guest ever. Yeah. Um, wow. I can give you a list of all the stuff I've not played. It's probably easier than giving you stuff for the list I have played. To be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I do play a lot of games for the channel. Um, but yeah, don't worry. You'll 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 have a chance next year when I'm playing less games for the channel, so you'll be fine. 
Um, Very nice. But uh, yeah, this week should, oh, should we talk about? This? Can I move on? Should we move on to one of my games there? Because I've also got some weird shit I played. Um, now, guys, it's worth saying like RimWorld is literally the most normal game I played this week. Everything else I played this week has been mad as box of frogs it's been nuts some of the shit i've played this week so i'll apologize ahead of time for the stupid stuff um but the next game i wanted to talk about was um v- probably quite briefly actually because it's already been kind of talked about but i played the second reigns game this week which is her majesty um this game is this game is the i mean yeah. you guys probably remember the first one it's literally <laughs> you slide left and you slide right you know you slide left yeah. and you slide right it's it's great you don't you're not a fan right not a fan am i, am I right in thinking you're not a fan Yep, that's, Who, me? Uh, anyone. No one else in the world seems no. to like this game. <laughs> no, I, I I streamed Reigns and I enjoyed it. We I got a good kick out of it. I think I think it puts across the simple concept that like actually goes uh in interesting paths and then it's just it, there's tons of humor in it. It's great and it's really easy to pick up and play. Again, it's not it's not a, a classic. It's not something that I go back to constantly, but it's it's a cute little game if you get it on sale. I mean, how much is it? It's like two or three dollars. Two pound. It's it? two pound nine pence. Yeah, like price. seriously, you like, could yeah. get a couple of hours to make that worth it. And it's like yep. you have this weird adventure that you go on that's not serious at all. And I, I think yeah. it's worth and it personally. The, se- the second one, you just keep saying like you're laughing. I'm like, you hate this game. I know Suda hates no, this game. I, it's just you're like, I, you're like I, I don't stupid. hate it. I just I think back to it. I'm just like it's just silly fun and it makes me smile. Like I'm not I'm not being sarcastic at all. It's a cute little game. Yeah, I, the second one is focused on the uh, in a different kingdom, so it's a totally unrelated story. Um, they've added items in, which adds a certain level of of complexity to the game. So instead of just swiping left or right, because for those of you who don't know, it asks you a question or gives you a piece of dialogue, and you can respond with left or right by moving a card left or right like a mobile game. Um, one's positive one's negative but how the game interprets your responses is where the lull comes in because you can um, you have the option to you have the option to to say like you know like one of the ones is a pigeon looks at you and you can say yes or bark and it's like either response doesn't make any sense but that'll actually then go on and lead you onto a different dialogue tree which is interesting but uh, yeah, I, I I mean I like the second one. The second one, I think the 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 other added items where you can just like instead of saying yes or no, you can just throw an item out. Um, is really interesting. But if you throw out the wrong item, it can be a game ender. <laughs> uh, it can be a game. Thank you, Cybers. I just got your message, Cybers. Thank you. But uh, we're... <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Okay. I, I five minutes before the show. Anyway, we'll we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah. The the added complexity adds is just interesting, and the story is a little bit more. Um, it's very patriarchal and it's 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 very sort of pointing out the inequality of the kingdom while at the same time sort of within three or four playthroughs it's completely flipped around which is again an interest interesting but very subtly done and uh, for the sake of two pound i'm glad they made it um to say it's a sequel though is probably a stretch it's more of a sidestep you know like doom and doom 2 or at least that's uh that's that's how it sort of looks to me um but uh you guys yeah, I don't think think picking it up do do people think that it's a it's a a sequel? I mean, there's there's really nothing in the first one to even make you think it would be a sequel. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I mean, I think I think a lot of people almost thought because there is a story in the first one. If you play it more seriously and you get through, you put a lot of hours into it. You um you do get to the point where you start realizing there's a subtle story traveling through each generation. Um, and I think that a lot of people maybe wanted a continuation of that, but this being set in a different kingdom, I think gave them scope to try some weird shit out. Um, what? In in my opinion, it's Super Giant's best game so far. Is okay. Oh, okay. This oh, Sam Sai and I are talking about Pyre. Oh, I like so just ignoring, I, yeah. just ignoring the conversation on the stream. Talk about Pyre. Yeah. <laughs> Pyre. Uh, let's talk about. Okay. Well, either way, people Disregard. don't. God. Th- there's not much more to say about Reigns. I mean, unfortunately, Reigns is one of those games where you know you either like it or don't. A lot of people seem to not like it, which I found was interesting because I was surprised me. Um, but another one that uh, <laughs> another one that was played by Arch Toasty was Ultimate. Trivia challenge. Um, yeah, we talked a little. We talked quite a lot about this yesterday on the show notes. But ultimate trivia challenge. I think it's important that we say um, that we just read the uh, the blurb for the game here. It says um, include your nine favorite categories: high quality graphics, party mode with all two to four players locally, <laughs> gamepad support, family friendly, fun for all ages. What are you waiting for? Um, yeah. Uh, what what are we waiting for, Arch? What what's this like? Tell us about the game. Uh, well, this game provides about 
an hour and about 10 minutes of fun before it starts to repeat itself. Uh, there is no, I mean, it blatantly says that there is no like uh, internet playing, like you can't play with your friends over the internet, it's all local play. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an option to either play only two or four players in party mode. You can't play What about three? three? Uh, yeah, no three, so there's no three. This it's is, only two it's or just four. Pub, it's just pub trivia. Yeah, basically, three? there's also no settings, so you can't change like the amount of time that it takes. Cause I had, I had gotten this with the idea of like, oh, well, all right, so there is no multiplayer that I can play over the internet. Maybe I could just have some fun on stream and stuff like that. I'll just make the timer super long so that the delay is not that bad. There's no options to change anything. There's no there's there's no cog wheel. There's <laughs> you can't change anything in the game at all. See, uh, name that sound is kind so of fun. What? Name that sound. Was it like go woof and you go it's a dog? It does have some very interesting ones. Uh, I can't. There's like a whale noise, and then there's one that's like a I don't know, <laughs> whale I, noise. That, what I, exactly I found... does that sound like? You do it, and you both did it. Thank you. Rip everyone's ears. Good yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, I, I, I've got to say, I think I have two thoughts instantly on this game. Right, my very first thought. No, I have three thoughts. My first thought is, why the fuck did you buy this? Um, the second one is, <laughs> yeah, this is that was my let's thought. given that this is three ninety nine. It's five dollars. Three ninety nine. Range is a much American better investment. Dollars. Range is Range has got more gameplay yeah. than this in a heartbeat. And my last question is, the developers missed an obvious trick to make this amazing by just like just have a thing so you can get a text file and take all the questions from a text file because you could make a custom linux question and answer thing you could make your own quizzes with this and, and as a quiz tool rather than a game they could have made the same engine and just made it so you make your own quiz and you could have had a much better time with it by like getting people to send but, the quizzes then made it could have been really fun well this production company i hope you're listening to this cause yeah that could have just been like all you gotta do yeah. is call it <laughs> make go. Just call it make your own trivia or DIY trivia, right? And then you just put in a bunch of questions with answers, and then just that's it. Just load it from a text file. It's a better game than this because you could have a lot of fun. We Way could do better. Linux quizzes, and well, we could do it, like educational quizzes, and it could be fun. I think I definitely think that there would be a specific group that would enjoy something like this. And it, it I mean, it doesn't look like it's poorly done. It, I mean, it kind of looks like a mobile port, but five dollars, really? That's for, exact, yeah. Um, I can I, mean, I can is... go I could go to my local you know place that I have beers every once in a while and 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 do this for That's free a on a Tuesday night. That's a bar or a pub. Yeah, yeah. Did I get exactly. the answer right. <laughs> yes, um, yes. I have to say, right, this point. is this is the question I have. Um, I feel like I have the skills to make this myself in about four different languages or Godot, right? Absolutely. I'm just like, yeah. I feel like I'm not yeah. sure the develop. I, mean, I feel like I already have the prerequisite skills to do this. Is the background with the question marks floating? Are they animated? Do they like fly up the screen slowly or anything like that? Yes, they do. Uh, oh, they do. Cool. They do like a nice little cool. okay. diagonal I wanna, I wanna across the screen. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's like they've got a large image and they're scrolling it to the left. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, there, there are no reviews, Arch so you need to put a review yeah, on there. Yeah, you should totally put a review up. It's um, my review will be it is not worth a oh, 99 review. cent game with banner ads on a mobile device. So, <laughs> yeah, I think the, see, the problem is with this is like there was a point in time where like you go, it's only four dollars. It's fun. But there are so many games now. Like there are so many. I've got a game on my list that I play this week that's 75 pence and I had a much better time than I would with this game. Um, yeah, I, I, well, I think you'll be really kind to this game by not just after... slamming it hard. After yeah. this, I think it's fair to say that Arch Toasty is now the worst guest ever. Uh, <laughs> that loadupgames.com, which is the developer, also made a game called Super Arcade Boy in Defender of the Planet Earth. And I'm fairly sure I've got this game, which is she's weird. I'm that actually doesn't look too bad. It actually looks somewhat fun. Um, it looks more looks like a real video fun. game. Yeah. <laughs> super, super, super arcade. Super Arcade Boy in Defense. No, I don't have this game. I, I've played about 50 games that are this exact game, though. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super Arcade Boy in Defender of Planet Earth. Yeah. Ah, I mean, at least it looks like a real video game. You can just imagine, that like, drum roll giant shit. pink ship yeah. looks totally out of, like, <laughs> looks like totally different animation than everything else. <laughs> yeah. Load Up Games proudly presents... Super okay, yeah. It's, it's, but yeah. how much? How much is that one? One pound fifty nine. That looks like a better game for this. Okay, that 
I mean, yeah, exactly. There you go. So that's that's instantly worth it. I've never played it. Yeah, that's, it's that's instantly worth it. worth it. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I only had four dollars, I could probably buy that game and at least two other games and have it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't do not recommend. Do not recommend. I do not recommend. Do not you recommend. know what's funny Spoiler, though is that toasty. Toasty plays something like this and doesn't recommend it, but Hex plays something like Fake Monopoly and recommends the hell out of it. Red Dead Fortune is a superb game. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And it's nothing like Monopoly. Right. Rento, Rento <laughs> Fortune has had an update and it's all 3D now as well. Rento Fortune is a great background for a conversation. Um, it is, it is. In fact, hold on. Rento Fortune is the same price as your shitty quiz game, right? Mostly Rento Fortune negative. Is, I don't care. I've Mostly played. Negative. I have this played. This is a game that you play when you want to just talk to your friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much have I played of Rento? Let's have a look. How so much Rento Fortune? Hex played? does bring up a good point, though. This is less than the one that Arch Toasty does, and you probably I've... get way more play right. out of this. I've played so... 10 hours. 10 hours of Rento Fortune. I'm not even part of the way done with it. So, yeah, we can <laughs> say it like, man. 10 hours. Shut your mouth. Rento Fortune is a unique classic. There's nothing else <laughs> like it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Rento's yeah. amazing. Um, I genuinely think Rento Fortune is an actual gem of a game because it is just an easy to understand game you can play <laughs> in the middle troll. of the night. I, you, everyone thinks I'm trolling. I, me, Cybrus, me, Hamish, we all play this fairly regularly. Uh, we usually play like um, we usually play Chaos Reborn, and then to cap the night off, we play this as a slow game. And it's I have a great time consistently. I'm not trolling. I love it. I've made like two videos in this fucking game. Um, I, I keep trying to get people to buy it and play it, and, and people just are like, no hex, shut up. They all think I'm trolling. They think it's a bit I'm doing. It's it's really not. <laughs> it's it's weird when your channel gets to the point where you have to try and convince people you're not joking. <laughs> the more you try to convince them, the more I think it's a bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, that was that was a fail though, Toasty. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, back oh, yeah. to my weird list of games. Uh, the next weird game on my list uh, is uh, Grid World. Um, this isn't even well, a game. This, well, this goes along with the the one after this too, right? They're both very similar styles of game. Yeah, um, this one, uh, Grid World, and the next game we can talk about, which is Vilmonic. I'll talk about them both together rather than breaking it up this point. Um, but Grid World is a it's an evolution simulator. Now, um, no, it's not. What, what it is, it is, it is an evolution. It's artificial life evolution. It's literally the first line. It says Grid World is an artificial life evolution simulator. So I think you're wrong there, you, you You do know that just because something says it is something doesn't mean it is. So like if I say I'm a billionaire, well, you're that a billionaire. Six pack abs. That doesn't. You got six pack abs. <laughs> yeah, it's Whoa. it's the yeah it's the internet. That's what makes it true. So please then go on. Yes, <laughs> this is this is this this not a game. <laughs> Not, not an evolution it's an simulator. evolution simulator it's an evolution, yeah, it's, an yeah, evolution yeah. Simulator. it's it's literally literally this green shit right and you start the game off and then you just sit and watch it it's like a screensaver um and then these little brightly colored pixels um turn into like they're the animals and then they'll like breed or eat the green stuff or then like lay poison and like different stuff and you just sit and watch it unfold and you can change like the parameters the simulation to encourage or decourage the growth of certain types. Um, I don't know what the fuck happened, but I played it for like two hours. And I say played it, I had it open for two hours and I, I kept glancing at it and going, oh, this is different now. Um, it's not a game. It's not a game, Sam. So it's not a game. Well, That's the thing. It's 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 it's, it's a, it's a like game. That, uh... This reminds me of like the mountain or that one where you like plant a plant and you watch it grow. It's more of a... Experience? Exper yeah, well, experience is the wrong word. It's more of a. It's it's basically like a distraction. It's like so, you know, I like when I, I was editing videos yeah. in Caden Live, and I've I've been I have had a video I've been editing for like a month, man. Or I swear to God, right? And uh, I've got this video I'm editing, and then I look across, and um, and it's just there. And it's like it's like I'm doing something. I'm working. I'm working. Look at what's happening over there. Same with I love mountain. I've got like 17 hours of mountain log because I just load it up like a screensaver and leave it running. Well, um, and I'm like, yeah, look at that. It's cool. Toasty, did you did you watch his video of this? What did what did you think about whatever this is? He doesn't no watch idea. my content. I didn't, I didn't I didn't see the oh. uh, I didn't see the video of this. But I, is this like that? I'm trying. Am to I the only that. one that watches your shitty videos? <laughs> Hey! I, sometime, I saw the toast video and I saw the review of oh, uh, God, I of a couple of uh, other 
I saw a few, a couple of more recent videos. For the record, the toast video is the best video on my channel, and you know it. Yes, it is. Uh, that is a hundred percent true. That yeah. is, I can't, I can't. You know what's funny? I, 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 anymore. I know this is sidetracking a little bit, but genuinely, somebody who lives in the same area as me has obviously hit follow because they've seen me in the shop and then noticed me on YouTube when it's come as recommend or something, and they've hit follow. <laughs> and somebody who knows me in real life has seen the toast video. It's probably the yeah. only video on my channel they've ever seen. And they and they was basically it, sent me threats from the toast video your, that I had to delete. Was it your daughter? No, no, she sends me she sends me threats all the time. Um, but no, oh. seriously, for real. Somebody <laughs> in real life was like was like, You need to sort your life out, get out. <laughs> Just like, like Oh Oh that was that but that this, video was satire, it wasn't serious. I mean, oh, it was this amazing. Is, it was even so, if it was no, that was serious to me, bro. <laughs> After after watching this game, can you actually make sense of it? Because all no, I saw was no. like little things. Okay, no. good. Then I I but got it completely. I I didn't I didn't make sense of it, but it was seventy nine pence and it kept me occupied for hours, just because it was just like, oh look, what's it doing now? Unless... And for seventy five pence, if something keeps you occupied for a couple of hours for seventy nine pence, it's still a yeah. better investment than fucking ultimate trivia ultimate challenge. Tri <laughs> I was you know what I mean? It's fucking. That. I had I had a good time. You just had <laughs> Sorry, sadness, actually. man. It's just yeah. Um, and it's got pixels, and you know I love pixels, so you know I'm just saying there's, <laughs> there's that. But no, I don't think necessarily with like the term game has become like a box you put things in. Something can be an experience or a simulation or just a thing, like a just a toy, and it's a perfectly valid art form. And I enjoyed this for seventy nine pence, and I recommended it because like especially if you're into like you actually can understand what's happening and you start messing with the simulation and stuff, you probably have a lot more value in it than I did. And for seventy nine pence, I think it's a reasonable price for what could be a complete waste of seventy five pence. But I enjoyed it, so I don't mind. But at least you didn't waste five dollars. At least you didn't waste five dollars on a quiz game. <laughs> but no, seriously, it's, it's it's worth checking out. If you if you find it, in, if like you look at this and you're like it's interesting. Um, you should probably you should probably check it out because it is interesting. I'm I'm just waiting for Toasty to like flip his desk in his chair and just walk away. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I like the quiz game. <laughs> Fuck you. I I could have <laughs> had it. I could have had an evolutionary uh, time yeah. is over. <laughs> well, is this like uh the what is that like when computers first became a thing? Uh, there was the guy that wrote the program, like it was like life. Yep, yep, yep. Like this that? is based on the is mathematic. That... This is based on the okay. mathematic behind that. I've had that confirmed from someone far smarter than me that that's what this is doing. Um, and he also gave me a list of other games that do this better. Um, that are actually games mm. that use that. But yeah, there's there's a whole thing called um, oh my god, it's called Pixel Fleet. I think. Oh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can find it. Um, Pixel Fleet. Hmm. It's on my. It's on my. Uh, it's it's on my my list. Um. I'm sure yeah, Sam side. This isn't. This isn't even a walking simulator. This is doesn't even have that kind yeah. of depth. This yeah, is. Fine. I think. There's I think no depth. Hex, it kind of he he hex pointed on. It's like this is a screensaver. This is just. This is the mountain. This is whatever yeah. that plant. I can't remember the name of the plant one. If anyone remembers what it's called, this is just something to look at randomly. <laughs> Cyrus wants me to stream it. Cyrus, you got it, buddy. Next stream, I will stream Cyrus. two hours. Of this straight two he, hours, yeah, two hours he straight. He literally of that. did a video on it, and it was what twenty minutes of him See, going. That's like, the yeah, thing, it's just him I don't, I don't know going. what this is. I don't know what's going on here. Twenty minutes of that video, right? I enjoy. I was having a great time. I didn't know what the fuck was happening. And if that's not worth 75 pence, I don't know what is, to be honest. And also, it's worth saying that video was not suitable for advertisers because it was so controversial. So there's that too. It's controversial, man. <laughs> it's, I'm not kidding. It's really not suitable for advertisers. I put a picture of it being like rejected by Google in my Discord in my Discord channel. I was like, really? Come on, dudes. <laughs> just come on. Uh, but the next game, which is which is just like it, or I say just like, which is more of a game, is um Vilmonic. Now I contacted. I played Gridworld, and then I was like, hmm, and it recommended Vilmonic. So I uh, so I messaged the developer, and I was like, yo, dude, can, can you hook me up? And he did. He sent me a code for it, which was nice of him. And the game's six pounds ninety nine, so it's much more of a financial investment. Um, and unlike Gridworld, the simulation is going on at a higher pixel ratio. Um, lower pixel ratio. Anyways, it's going on in like more fidelity, so you can see the animals actually evolve and move. Um, but while that's happening, you're building a house. And you can like you can like farm certain types of animal, and you can try and protect them. And the zombies that constantly appear and attack them. Um. So even though it's a sandbox world, it's still like it's still like the same idea of like trying to foster evolution. But this one, you actually have a hand in but physically. You 
fostering evolution yeah. and helping. Arch Toast is banished. He's had enough of that shit and he's just gone. He thinks if he did it quietly, we yeah. wouldn't see, which is nice. Um, <laughs> but but yeah. this, it looks like you actually interact with. Like, I mean, I can't really tell by the, the screenshots, but it looks like you have tools to build walls and and food and stuff like that, right? So you actually interact with this. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's uh, it, it, it's it's interesting, um, and there's definitely more going on than Grid World, obviously. Uh, I was kind of like, I feel like it's, I feel like the, the evolution and the and like the, the the resource management in this game are two separate things, are two absolutely separate things. Um, but I'm sure as I get more into it, I'll I'll start seeing the overlap more and start farming more. But um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting game. It's a good game, and I think that's that's the thing. It seems to be whereas like Grid is not a game; it's just a weird, interesting thing. This is a game, and although it's at the moment confusing, it leaves me a little bit, a little bit weird, and like, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with it. It's interesting enough that it makes me want to keep playing. Um, so I'm gonna play a bit more of this. I might play again. This might be a good one to stream, and you can design your own dude as well, which is which is fun. Um. But yeah, I'm not quite sure the purpose of design. Really interesting. It, it, interesting is the word. I can't. I haven't really played enough. Like I'm about an hour and an hour and something into it, and I can't say it's a good game or a bad game yet. But it's certainly interesting and it's mechanically solid. I mean, everything works as intended, and it was so, developed on Linux as well, for the record. One of my interesting things. So I'm looking. I'm looking through the Steam page, and it mm -hmm. basically says why early access and the guy says i'm a one-person game studio and this is completely unfunded and diy he's saying that this is a final release quality game so this is it and really he's just doing ea for beta testers mm, yeah. I feel about that like did you run into bugs like have you had no, any issues no with it? i had no issues with it other than me not knowing how the fuck Do to play i didn't actually come into there was nothing in here that stopped me playing i felt like everything was mechanically working perfectly but do you feel like it's a fleshed out full game yeah. that's worth $10 oh, yeah. US? Yeah. Well, I see that's subjective as well, isn't it? I mean, is any game worth any amount of money? I mean, like that's subjective as hell. But yeah, if I'd have paid six ninety nine for this, I probably would have been happy enough. I mean, there's enough content there. And um, I obviously I have the problem that I have so many games to choose from, to select from, that um, I tend to play little amounts of lots of games rather than a lot of one. But if I had less distractions going on, I could probably see myself playing a lot more of this. I mean, at one point I dug a hole and a rock came out, and then I used the rock to make some stuff. And, you know, it's like it's kind of like one thing leads to the other, which leads to the other. And, like, there's this sense of discovery in it, which I really like. Uh, the only thing I would criticize, though, is I don't like the color scheme it uses. I find it really washed out and pastel looking. I don't, I'm not a fan of the color scheme, but um, the actual gameplay itself seems interesting enough to make me want to keep going. This looks which like is like a, a product of, okay. <clears throat> I'd say, Madness. solid, like, an ability of somebody to like solidly be able to code a game and make it and then one person not being as artistically inclined as some other people yeah uh, so it probably has a really solid running base mm. and then you know yep. just needs a little bit of a better design team it's uh it's upsetting isn't it because there was a time like guy, so. there was a time in the spectrum days when one dude was really good at coding game design can make a whole game mm -hmm. and then they need artists and that's when the cost started going up so you know maybe this harkens back damn to the artists they're damn fucking artists trying to nickel and dime us um also Cy cybris as rem if you don't mind me checking him cybris um talked that reminded me of a game we played that i haven't put in the show notes um but i do just want to briefly talk about because i've got i've got a video for this coming next week um but uh yeah we played we played can't drive this on stream the other night um now can't drive this is a uh is a game where one person puts the track down. See, this is what I'm talking about. So many weird games this week. One person puts the track down while the other person drives the track. Um, it was an experience, I'll say that much. It was. Oh, I've heard, of, I've heard of this game, actually. Did you hear anything good about the game? No. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I literally heard that basically it's, it's a good idea, but it has a lot of different issues, and it doesn't really play out well. Yeah, the problem I've got is first of all, like you've got the first, the third person driving view on the left, and then you've got the 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 um on the right, you've got the track laying. You don't need the third person driving, but you can just bin that entire screen and just use the other screen for both aspects of the game, which works a lot better. Um, which is interesting itself. But yeah, it's it's Cybris has summed it up there quite well in chat. At the moment, it's terrible. Don't buy it. But I have faith in the devs, man. They're gonna knock it out of the park. I have faith in them. They they made Chrono Gun, Chrono Gun, which is a good game, well, so they I can do just... it. 
I would just see this evol or dev devolving into a, hey, Hex, let's you and me play this game. I'm going to build the track for you. And you're like, yeah, sure. And then I just don't. That's what we did. That's what happened. Well, <laughs> that was my entire gameplay yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, it, the problem is it's priced at six ninety nine. There are better games for six ninety nine in this case. Um, there are lots of other choices for six ninety nine that you'd probably enjoy more. And as much as I'd like to say, it, maybe it's going to be great when they finish because Pixel Mechanics know what they're doing. It gets about two updates a year on average. So I can't, unless the development picks up and we start seeing some changes, instead of fixing the gameplay, which is like you don't really know where you're supposed to be heading to to win, um, they added hats instead. So it's hard for me to recommend the game. But you know, that's yeah that they're wow that's really disappointing that seems like someone that's really not focused on the game and yeah i don't know but like, like we was it's racing like and we got to we got <laughs> to the point though, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but we got to the point where Guys, like we, we like he was laying track i was driving he's like where the fuck we're supposed to be going and neither of us knew it was like what is the game um and that's kind of what the video is yeah. just a highlights reel really um with a bit of exposition at the end and yeah it's um yeah, I'm not a fan. I can't really recommend it, which is a shame because I like the way it looks aesthetic. I think it looks lovely. Um, it's got some really nice water and some interesting idea of like someone making the track. It's like an interesting idea, but uh, I think it's been done before. There was that, um, oh, what was that game? There was an old game on the Atari, uh, the ST days, like the Amiga years. Um, General was Custard's this... Revenge. No, there was a game and it was like this. It was called, it was called I mean, Trick that, Race. That was a Stunt, game. Stunt Driver. Stunt Driver 2, I think he was, um, which had the exact same thing where you could build a track and then race it. And that was revolutionary at the time. Um, and I think this is trying to like get that same vibe, but fails massively. But yeah. See, when like I first it. saw this game, I thought it was, because uh, I had no idea how this game played at all. I just saw the screenshots a little bit. And I just, off of first glance, thought this was like a ultimate chicken horse, where basically you'd have one person driving oh, the car, yeah. and then you'd That's have somebody idea. placing obstacles or something like that in their way. Uh, and I That'd was be like, wow, better. it's like a pretty fun game. That'd be uh, a lot better. You're, you've just imagined, <laughs> for the second time on the show today, one of the hosts has imagined a better game than we've played. Um, me with the puzzle game where you make your own puzzle, we we, we make your own quiz, and you with this game where you've you've turned it around and made it better. So yeah, twice and, now we've we've trumped. We've and trumped I'm them. useless. And then the pseudo shred. <clears throat> yeah, Argenta Mage. <laughs> I yeah. I'm telling you, I could still sit here and talk about Argenta Mage. <laughs> so, no, so grass, we're not. No. Grass cutter hex. Okay, uh, again, hex we're over time do. at the minute, so. Grass cutter is a game where you get to play the part of a lawnmower, um, and you have to crop people's grass before monsters grow out the grass and try and kill you. This game is immensely well polished. It is very casual. It feels like a larger version of a mobile game, but that's not always a bad thing because it's seventy nine pence. So who gives a shit? Um, yeah. It's 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 fun. It is interesting. It has a silly plot, and I have nothing but recommendation for it. I, I played it. I've done a first launch video on it when I played it for the first time on camera and I was quite impressed with it. The, the, the whole thing was just fun. It reminds me of Pac-Man 256. It's got that kind of vibe to it. Oh, good yeah. call. Yeah, it's got that kind of same like thing. Going. It's not, it doesn't play that similar, but like the whole idea of like you've got one character, you move in while you know, all the things are happening. Um, it's got a thing to it. It's got a plot, which is in itself insane that it's got a plot. But yeah, it's puzzle. It's say, like a puzzle game. Police, like walk into that house. Yeah, it's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's fun, and like you have like you have to keep an eye on the battery level of, or petrol level of your lawnmower. And if you go over a uh, non-mobile object like a, a piece of wood in the grass, what? it reduces your battery level, and then you have to go and get battery power-ups to keep mowing lawn. It's it's really interesting. It's seventy-nine pence, so yeah. Definitely yeah, it looks. Look. It actually looks. I mean, for a buck. Yeah. That actually yeah. looks really good. Yeah, it's really good, and there's loads of levels as well. Like you've got this whole planet to explore. And there's multiple levels on each planet, on each side, on each like continent. It's really interesting, and it looks it's so polished for a, the kind of game it is. It's really polished. I like that isometric Earth thing. That's uh, yeah, that looks really it's, cool. It's silly. It's it's a bit daft. It I fits the tone it. of the game. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's all I can say. About that a lot of people are gonna go, no man, it's a mobile game. Yeah. It's fine. It's seventy nine pence. There's no adverts. I'm like, I'm totally fine with paying seventy nine pence for a yeah. mobile game, um, and it does feel like a mobile game. It, but it, the controls but are very, looks, very good. Yeah. It's a puzzle game, and you don't have to worry about energy and advertisements and like yeah. a buck. That's I plus, agree. you know, as soon as, as soon as Steam sale hits, this thing's gonna go to like twenty five cents. Well, to be honest, I paid the seven, the full price for it um, because I saw, yeah. I literally saw an article. Like, I think Game on Linux posted an article about it, um, and I was like. Yeah, that was great. And I just went and bought it. 
and I just I had yeah. forty one pence in Steam cards, so like I was like whatever, I'll just I'll yeah, come yeah. to Ford seventy nine pence, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's good, and it was a surprise thing. But yeah. do you see what I mean about the week I've had, man? Everything I've played has been fucking weird. I've not played a single normal game this week, just a normal game well, I've played and enjoyed. You know, it's been if you'd weird. have just played some Argentum Age. <laughs> Well, yeah, I feel like I'm burnt out on Gentle Mage, though, from all the talking about you, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving Sorry, on. I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, we're just so tired of it. Uh, quickly, I think, again, this could, before we move on to the newsy type stuff, is uh, Arch Toast is another one of the many people over the last few weeks that seems to have randomly started using um, started using uh, wine out of nowhere. Like, he's a wine novice, but all of a sudden he's discovered the love of wine. And uh, I think you're having a good time, aren't you, Toasty? I am. Uh, I'm using wine with uh, with Lutris uh, together as as a as a team. They they work really well. Um, <clears throat> I can't really uh, say too much as to the technical aspects of the way wine works or anything like that because uh, it's just literal sorcery to me. But, it's just an emulator. You know, <laughs> yeah, no, it is not. <laughs> Triggered everyone in chat by saying that. Yeah, yeah I know. Seriously. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was fun. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, I don't know. I love to learn new things and stuff like that. So just sitting around and tweaking and stuff like that. It's, uh, super awesome, super excellent. And, uh, I don't know, like I said, I just, I like to, to, to tweak things and get things super optimized. So I've got, uh, I've got Overwatch working pretty well and League of Legends working like flawlessly. And Star Wars The Old Republic working pretty flawlessly as well. I and know. Star Wars well, The Old Republic also working super well. Yeah, yeah, and for cool. those that don't know, which I don't think we have it in here, someone actually flat packed up. It's League in there. Legends. We'll get there. It's in there. We'll get oh, to that. Oh, it's in the show notes. I added it last night. Disregard. Um, yeah. Disregard everything I've just said. Spoilers. No, no. Spoilers. Spoilers. Um. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What are you? What are you? Are you? Oh, okay. That's a dog. That's a dog. Um. Oh my God, your dog's adorable. Look at the ears Thank on that you. thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's. Oh my god, we yeah, we he have wanted some serious he wanted and... some attention really quick. Wow, that that's a nice looking dog. That's a nice looking dog. Yeah, and yeah. when when Arch Toasty steps away during his streams, the dog steps away. That's when that's actually when the stream explodes and then Arch Toasty comes back <laughs> and like all the people leave. Yeah, know, like that's usually how it is. I come back, there's like thirty people in the room, I come back. My thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, all yeah. right, bye. We came here. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome to the doggo stream. Here we are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Goodbye, okay. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Goodbye. Good job. Goodbye, dog. Man, anyone has an animal on the stream, it derails it, whatever happens. Like, when Hamish is, like, having Zeus there, it's like everyone just stares at Zeus because he's a damn majestic-looking bastard. Shoot, it's like, <laughs> you always just got the big old ears. Good good work. You, you kick, you know, Don't kick the dog. Don't kick the dog. I said kick the dog off the stream. Then I was like, it sounds like I'm endorsing kicking the dog. That's not the, that's not the message here. But, uh, yeah, should we move on to the, uh, to the, the, the almost newsy half-news stuff then, unless there's anything to add, guys? Any surprise games you guys want to shoot in before we move on? No, I sorry for the uh, surprise dog. That's that's fine. That's fine. I'm just saying, whatever. Someone has an animal. Doesn't matter who. The the streams derailed for a few minutes while we're just all like, oh, the dog. Yeah, and it's great that giraffe girl yeah. shows up right then for the <laughs> dog. Giraffe like, I know, dog! like I swear, I swear, she's just like constantly looking at all of like the Twitch feeds yeah. for just, just yeah. any animal yeah, that comes the on the feed. Yeah, she's dog. like that one right there. I bet she didn't even know this. Like she probably didn't even know the stream existed, and then was just like, dog. Yeah. Hi, giraffe yeah. girl. So. Hi, giraffe girl. <laughs> so, hi, giraffe girl. I felt like I should hide as well. So, uh, Steam now has a form of platform specific wish listing to help developers see demand. And thankfully, this article has interesting images that show me things. So, you say in your preferences which platform you want to see. So, we want to see Steam versus Linux. And then the developers see. Like people have wish listed it on which platform they go. Oh, Mac. Twenty five people on Mac have wish listed this game. Twenty five two people on Linux have wish listed this game. It goes, your game's not available on this platform. So if they go, oh, like you know, three million people on Linux want this game, they go, oh look, three million people want it, and we don't have it on Linux. So now by adding a game to your wish list on Steam, you're telling the developer you want a Linux version. No more of this plus one shit, which is no. which is good. Um, which is which is a really uh, great thing, I think. I think the idea of it is great. The implementation is going to hurt Linux more than it's going to help. The So I've actually looked at this. Basically what they're saying is if you have only Linux checked in your platform preferences, then when you wishlist, this will happen. But you have to manually go 
and enable this, you know, uncheck everything and enable this just for that. My opinion is what's going to happen is people are, especially those that dual boot, no one's going to mess with this. Right. They, this is so far out of the way. Mo no one's going to mess with this. And if anything, it's going to hurt Linux more and that people are going to be wishlisting it and developers going to be like, yeah, guys, I want to bring it to Linux, but there's only 10 people that have wishlisted on Linux. It's like, no, our numbers are bigger than that. It's just we haven't set it up properly. And this, I think, is going to be used against us. I hope it's not. I really hope it's not. But the way that it's out of the way kind of makes me worried for something like this. Wow. Well, you guys heard it here. If you guys have some, guys, go ahead and go. It's worth saying. So I have checked sure your wish list stuff mine, put on Linux. Yeah, mine is. You, in order to get to this, guys, is if you open Steam and you go to your name in the top right corner of the screen where it's got like it's got the little control pad logo for big picture, and next to it's got your name. Right. Click on that, and then click on um, preferences. And that will take you to this screen. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and make sure that only Linux is ticked. Then hit save. That is how you get to it, and that is how you send your message. Um, I've taken to wish listing every to game. That, what I've done is I've taken every game that's not on Linux and wish listed all of them. <laughs> that's my plan. I'm going to wish list all the games that aren't on Linux. But the problem is also then though. Um, my other concern is people who would play games like who like I've got loads of games in my library that are Windows games that I've got from bundles and stuff. That I might play if there was on Linux. So I have no way of telling the developer that I've already owned it, but I want to play it on Linux. So this doesn't help that much in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, there are, this, it's not perfect, but it's a good idea. Well, and it, it's a good idea, like I said, but it's, it seems to be like this. This genuinely seems like Steam is trying to help developers know which platforms to target. Mm -hmm. It's just doing it in a not great way in my opinion. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe it will work out and maybe because Linux, you know, communities are so actively aware of stuff like this, maybe it will change some things, but I just have a feeling that you know, folks that aren't as well savvy. the other and the it's other not problem. exactly apparent in Steam like like you said you have to go to a very specific spot, yeah. go to preferences like, I don't know. We'll, see how well it goes. yeah, cancer goes now. They would better to be have a separate list for one two ports. And the reason that I agree with that is because why would I wish list a game that's not available on the platform I'm on? Why would I wish list a Windows game for the most part? The only time I'll wish list a Windows game is if I think it might be coming to Linux. I want to keep an eye on it. But for the most part, why would I wish list games that aren't coming to Linux? You know, what as a Linux gamer, why would I press that button? You know, it's changing the nature of the wish list from the wish as in I wish it was on my platform. At the moment we use it as things we want, want to buy in the future. So like are we changing the like what the wish list is used for? Is that the intent here? Because that's gonna be the reality of it if people use it. So not perfect. You are right, not perfect. But again, as you well, said, Pseudo, step in the right direction. Arch well, like, what you I were think... gonna say Yeah, I was gonna say, why did I think that uh like I said this yesterday I think that they implemented some sort of system where you went and you like went to the actual game page and then you clicked like an arrow that showed like you you were on Linux or you were on whatever and that you wanted them to develop for that. I've heard about that too somewhere. That that too? No, no, I've seen that somewhere as well. No. I think that was a proposed beta thing. That, that. No, I think that, you know, when people go on um, Reddit and they go, here's a feature they should implement and then make a screenshot oh, of it. Okay. I think that was one of those because I've seen that too. And I'm sure it was one of those and from a while back. And I think we can all agree that would be a better imp implementation than something mm, like this. Yeah. Having it yeah. up front yeah. on a page, and then even from there, you can be like, set this as my default or whatever so that you don't have to do it. Whereas right now, yeah, you have to click it once, but it's hidden behind a couple of different layers before you can find it. And you have to gl actively go look for something like that. And I mean, I think that, you know, this is pointing out Conseco's point too, is, you know, having it up front of what we're you want it to be would is just a better idea again it's it's a great idea i just think it's not a proper implementation i'd agree with that um a step in the right direction though but come on valve why would i wish this the game i can't have why would i wish this PUBG? I ne i don't want PUBG on my wish list i don't want it to tell me it's on sale but i do want it on well, Linux, that, maybe so, you don't you know. want somebody to just buy it for you yeah like, like i can have yeah wish list and be that's, like oh here you go yeah yeah well that's, that's a great what, point that's actually like that's what i worry about problem. yeah because yeah, i have that. i I have a couple games on my wish list that are coming to Linux in the future, but like, what if you know a family member buys it for me? It's like, no shit, I didn't want it there because I'm just putting it there to remind myself for the future. It's like, and if it doesn't come, you just wasted money. Like, I don't know, but it, it um, seems like they're. Well, what if like it. what if like you can always return it, but or not accept it? But what you if know, like, what if another streamer looking down my wish list for stuff that I haven't played? 
and then they only have Windows games, and it sends the wrong. Like as as someone who's publicly a Linux user, I think it'd be very like bad bad form for me to start wishlisting a load of Windows games. You know, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you there's there's ups and downs. At least it's a step in the right direction. You know, at least they're trying something, which is nice. Um, we'll have to wait and see how that goes, though. But the next item on the list is the latest Steam client update rolls out shader pre-caching for OpenGL and Vulkan. Pseudo, tag, go. He's not there, is he? When you install... Okay, so when you play a game, your computer has to do some processing. The Some of them, not all of them, so have to do some processing to make performance better. Um, this is basically Valve saying, hey we can download this for you and load it up ahead of time so that your performance is better from the get-go. Right. That's, That's what we idea. thought it was. That's what Toasty and I thought it was. However, okay. doesn't that mean doesn't that mean that the developer has got to go and buy a bunch of graphics cards and go, okay, here's the cache for the 750Ti at 1080p. Here's the cache for the 750Ti an ultra wide. Here's the cache for the 970 and 1080. Isn't that what they've got to do, though? Isn't this like something there's a lot of hoops for them to jump through to get this information? I don't think it works like that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not all that versed in shader caching, but no. I mean, it's like, I think it's more of, you know, like, um, like compiling a language, like uh, C. When you compile it, C pretty much runs the same from one system to another. Like you don't need. Yeah, different... but I'm sure that the the actual chipset and resolution is how the shader cache is made. Because doesn't it make a shader cache for that chipset? But it's all. But it's all. No, I don't think it's like by each card. I think mm. it's more. I think it's more standardized than that. I could be wrong. I think you might um, be. I think that's why we okay. have to do it on. I, I really do. I, I'd like. I hopefully someone in chat's going to know. But um, I yeah, I'm sure. But my point was, if they have to do that for each individual card, you're only ever going to see two shader caches: the most popular card and the current newest card are the only shader caches we're ever going to see. Um, so yeah, hmm. I I hope you, I hope I'm wrong, and you, it works the way you're thinking. But I'm just wondering why didn't we always do that if it's just generic? Yeah. So Ken Seiko's agreeing with me. It seems like. Hmm. Hmm, okay. It it seems like you you do it once and then as long as the i mean the cards are pretty much all standardized so it again i'm not i'm not the most in-depth person about shader caches so where's where's would, jesus I, when we want him <laughs> the one yeah, really, like, where are you damn it it'd be perfect to ask but uh yeah this uh this article anyway for those of you that are wiser than me you may want to read this article there's the link for it right there um, but I, it'd be nice because shader caches are pain in the ass right i mean like there are certain games that do it and you just have to like wait for ages and other games stutter like fuck. So it would be a good thing if we get across the board done. That'd be great. But I wonder how big these shader caches are going to be. Are we going to be talking like super large installers? I don't know. Well, that's one of my questions. And what if you never use them? I mean, just yeah, what if you, you never load the game? It's just taking space. But this. Yeah, I was going to say, what, what if it just comes with the game? Like when you download it on Steam and everything like that, it just sits in the library. It doesn't ever actually get like put on or anything like that. And then like whenever you go to start the game or like only your installed games in your library will have that thing ready to go so that whenever you click on it it'll just preload it really fast or go ahead and have it ready to go yeah. and my whole take on this more from this specific thing is the fact that again once again this is valve kind of thinking out of the box and trying to make the bar to entry for something like this that much lower and yeah. run that much better out of the box yeah, so that's yeah. that's that's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, like they're just, they're just optimizing on Linux. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. It's interesting that it doesn't work on direct text, though, isn't it? I mean, that seems interesting. Interesting. Um, but anyway, as I none mean, of us know anything useful, we should probably I don't, move on. <laughs> well, but I, I don't know. I, I would think that it would work different in DirectX, and because DirectX is proprietary, they can't yeah. actually see how it would work to do something that's like this. That's true. For DirectX. Yeah, yeah. So it would be up to Microsoft to to push a a thing like this and. It may already do it as part of the DirectX system. It may already be something DirectX system. Maybe. Does. Maybe they already do, know. yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't know. I don't, I, yeah, I don't have a clue. Yeah. Um, the next item is, now this is, the, I picked this item up uh, like the 8th of December, so it's been a while, but the topic is still good, um, which is the first release of Wine was out, and it had some fixes for Witcher 3, which was great, but uh, I think more importantly, Wine 3 RC3 came out today. Um, so 
like Wine 3 is stable, it's in code base freeze, and we're looking at getting a full release version in the next couple of weeks, as promised. Um, yeah, good shit wine, right? I mean, like, fucking, yeah, the wine team are killing it yet again. They're getting stuff out on time. Um, I don't think they've missed a release schedule, actually, so far, like, since then, since Wine 2, at least, since I've been following it. And the new version has DirectX 3D 11 enabled by default for AMD and Intel. Um, AES yes. encryption support for Mac, interesting enough. Um, carry on, Sudo, you have something to say? I was going to say, I think the reason that they're going to Wine 3... So, for those that don't know in programming terms, the numbers are normally kind of made up however you decide to make them up. Like, so the Linux kernel, Linus said flat out that we're going to Linux kernel 5.0 come the summer of 2018. Why? Because that's what he decided. And I'm guessing the reason that they're doing Wine 3 is... Normally, it's built around some kind of large changes, right? And I think yeah. DirectX 3D11 enabled by default, that's a huge change. That's that's pretty awesome. And to, to put plant a stake in the ground and say, okay, we're calling this Wine 3, um, I'm hoping we see as awesome of uh, an update that we got from Wine 2 as we do with Wine 3. I was going to say, when did Wine 2 actually come out? It wasn't that long ago. Was Christmas. It, it was Two last Christmas. Ago? No, it was last Christmas. Oh, was wasn't it just it? last Christmas? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Yeah, it was last Christmas. I'm sure it was. Um, because I remember, okay. like, I spent Christmas Day playing Doom. Ah. Which I might do again this year. Actually, thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, well, and to that's... be fair, I had a baby, which makes it feel like ten years have gone by. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. But uh, yeah, it's, you know. I hope if it becomes a thing where they go where they increase the major version number every year. But with it come uh, a lot more stability or a lot more like enough minor improvements to make a big improvement to games. Like this is the patch that they've put the Wisher Three patches mainline. The the there's a lot of, of tweaks that'll help Overwatch. Yeah, I mean if this is the sort of night and day difference that because Wine was a bit crap, but then 2.0 came out and it was amazing. Um, so for me, I'm like I'm I've got big hopes for this. I'm really hoping Wine Three is going to be a going to be some good shit. Is what I'm hoping. So Arch Toasty though, you you've just recently started using Wine, so you never saw it pre Wine 2.0, right? Uh, correct. I I want to say like I tried to use like Wine like way way long long time ago. Like whenever I tried mm. to play like Fallout New Vegas, I mean this was a long long time ago. Uh, and of course it didn't work, and I just got super confused because I wasn't very like versed with it. But I think that was like yeah, it was a one point something version, but it was it was pre two. But yeah, my all so my then... experience is basically. 2.9 and 2.21 and sorry in comparison <laughs> i mean you would say that it's it's pretty easy to jump in and get involved with something like that now right to get your game started at least through something like lutris right yeah absolutely uh i mean for newcomers i would definitely recommend lutris uh and then because the way that they're like you guys all know how lutris works mm. they have the website and then they have yep, the client yep. side uh, very easy yeah very easy it just yeah it makes things so much easier and it's kind of like it it reminds me kind of like the aur just for like games sort of i guess yeah no i no, so, agree yeah. i can see i can see similarities there yeah well and this uh, this kind of makes me think though is like lutris has come so far should we start just you know referring to lutris directly instead of wine it's one of those things like it's it's gnu and linux well yes but you know, you no, use no, Linux I think, kernel, you I use, think use GNU tools. Lutris wine, is it just Lutris that embeds wine, or should we could still call it? No, wine? no, I think it's fair to say because all Lutris does is it automates the setting up of the wine containers and the profiling. <laughs> um, I think I, as much I'm as sorry. The, I, I just like how you said all Lutris does is this. Uh, no, no, it's it. still it's still a big it's deal, but it's not changing the nature of wine. It won't magically make your game yeah, that no, doesn't work in wine work. Yeah. It's, it's just a tool for for automation, the installation process, and it's a yeah, great yeah, tool that I use exclusively, pretty much for wine now. I don't use wine outside of outside of Lutris because it's just hassle. Um, even if I manually set my containers and stuff, it's still easier than using wine. And I think wine would benefit from its own tool for doing all this like maybe it would benefit from that but um yeah I, I think that even though all it does is you know is a massive understatement it's still not changing the nature of wine like if your game don't work in wine it's never going to work in wine just because you've got lutris so you know um and jay code yeah. is here to drink yeah, wine sure. apparently yeah <laughs> well, i just think it takes uh that step of having to kind of for people that aren't so used to wine or the way that wine works or the ins and outs, it's just a lot easier to be able to jump in and change the settings and stuff like that. Um, then yeah, I, I think just cancer code. 
Canticos nailed this. Lutris is a good front end for wine, like Retro Arch <coughs> is yeah. for Libretro. Uh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. That's nailed. You've, yeah. you've just you've articulated yeah. once hey. again. Well, others, chat has articulated others... things better than us. Well, and others have done this before. Play on Linux is one. Uh, Code Weavers. I was going to mention Play on Sam. I think they're uh, all inferior like... to Lutris. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It feels like Lutris kind of polished it and made it like easily approachable like i tried play on linux in the past i just could never That's get things terrible, working yeah right. yeah That's i could never technology's yeah. technology's been there forever but it seems like someone came along and just made it easy for I think... stupid people like us to actually use it with all the stuff that's not Lutris based, I never know where the files are going. I know, I feel like I never know where shit is on my system. Like with with Play on Linux, it just sort of magically goes into a container and you don't really know where. Whereas Lutris, you always you can always right click and go browse files. It's really easy to find. And because you launch your games from Lutris when you've installed them, it's easy to keep track of what isn't isn't installed, which I really like. Yeah, because they keep it nice and contained, like right in a nice folder right on your right in your home. Yeah, absolutely. And apparently, uh, apparently, Kanzako has just discovered retro achievements. Uh, retro achievements. Um, yeah, retro is. retroachievements.org is a fantastic website. You should definitely check out retroachievements.org. Uh, what you do is you plug it into your retro arch. You put, you put in your login details in there, and then you get achievements in retro games. They don't mean anything at all. It doesn't add value, but it's yeah, just fun. Yeah, no achievement does. Yeah, it's just that's, funny. That's it's amazing, just... though. Like that. Yeah, that that's, yeah, I was gonna say that's amazing. People have gone back to these games that they love and actually added in achievements. That's incredible. Yep. Oh, and Hex has his own page. Of course he does. Come on, that dude. That is really... That is great. <laughs> no, that I is really that. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, it's really cool because it's really easy to use. You just, like, plumb it into RetroArch and then that's it, you're done. And it just tracks your achievements from then on. And it's kind of satisfying that you're playing Mario Kart and it's like, bing, you just got an achievement. You're like, yeah, I did. Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> just, my God, yeah, that's did. incredible. Did you not All know right, about this that? this is the best... This is the best news of the day. It wasn't even in our docket. I, th I thought everyone knew about it already. I didn't know that was something people didn't know about. No. I never heard of it. Well, as for the worst news of the day, then. Oh, do we have to? Oh. The worst news of the day is the Linux-powered Atari, Atari box pre-order launch has been officially paused. What I've actually written in the show notes, though, is that Atari doesn't want us to be happy. Hope is on pause. Um. Yeah. which is which is fair well uh, this is the worst news <laughs> this is the shit isn't it it's the shit the the oddest thing about this is three days before they announced the pre-order launch and then literally the day of at the 11th hour you know the 11th hour 59 minute 59 second they're like yeah 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 we're putting it on hold but they didn't even do it on the page. Like it was and in they the didn't newsletter. fucking say why. They didn't actually say what. They, they used bullshit terms. But they didn't just go, yeah, this is the reason we fucked up. They want to spend more time to polish the operating system and stuff. This is just such a Supposedly. bullshit thing. Yeah. yeah. I personally think that there was, it was always them like, what did we say yesterday? Sticking a pinky in the anus of the audience to find out what the interest levels was. <laughs> I'm um, sorry I missed that conversation. Yeah. Pinky in the anus of the audience because they just want to know the temperature. And I think this was really, I don't think they ever planned on producing this. I think literally that's, that's this crap. was a plan. I, I hope, I hope it, I'm wrong. I hope I'm really wrong. Really disappointed. But I think they want to know if it was well, worth going to manufacture with this, is what was happening. Yeah. Well, my thoughts are is that, uh, yeah, basically along the same lines, which is, I mean, I think that they already had the means to m produce this yeah. item. Uh, that but they put it on Kickstarter and they put it on Indiegogo, I think, yeah. or whatever, and just they wanted sort of, it to be crowdfunded yeah. just Indiegogo. so that they could be like, get that pinky right in there and be like, all right, this is what the people want, like this is what they need. And then I think they realized that they weren't delivering that product. I mean, do we even know the specs? Like the actual? No, specs? we don't. We have yeah, value. No, nothing. So, no, no, nothing. Yeah, that's what I'm is that no one well, was going to buy what... that without? But that would... I was. Those, that's what released, so. I was going to pre-order it. That's what this was for, though. This was the official announcement of, you know, what it was going to do, the specs, how much it was going to cost, all this stuff. And I, I'm i not one of those people anymore that, that funds something like this. And I usually don't get excited over something like this. But I was there was psyched. just something about this that got me super was, hyped. Yeah. And I was literally at work. I have three monitors at work. And one of my monitors was dedicated to the Indiegogo page for this, refreshing constantly. And then I got the news and the RSS from Gull. And I'm like, oh, you you know Bastards, what? Uh, you see, literally, this is they've the thing. just done yourself more damage. I was literally going to come home and like from work and order it. That was my plan. I was going to kickstart this, no hesitation. I was like, it's got Atari, which to me is like 
they've designed all the right things they're making the night noises worst case scenario i've got a reasonably powered linux machine in my house extra best case scenario i've got a whole ecosystem of games which i can use but i was like worst case scenario i'll just put fucking full linux on it you know and it's got a built-in wi-fi but, for my keyboard and mouse yeah wireless my keyboard but they've, and mouse they've the already said flat out that it was gonna you were gonna have access to the linux desktop underneath yeah, yeah. they've even they even said before that you know I, there was the long article i don't know do we talk about it last time or the time before that where they basically said you know we want to sell this box if you never come and buy anything from us again at least we know we've done a good job and that yeah. you sold that they you said bought the all box. the right things you can run your emulators on it if you want yeah and it and that's why i think everyone was cautious in that it was it's a little bit too good to be true it was as it turns um, out so Alfcat, this was supposed to be a box by Atari that has a pretty front end where you can do media streaming such as Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, but then also play your retro. I know that's all I said was retro games, but also it was an unlocked system where you could um, get to the desktop and, and do whatever you want in the standard Linux environment. But also you could run things like Steam and uh, and and run your uh, GOG games and you know smaller indie games should run on this. I mean, again, my NUC, my Intel NUC box is smaller than this, probably has less power than this, and I run a ton of this stuff from my from from this little NUC, and I see this as taking the place of that, and this would sit perfectly. But they've just basically, uh no, uh, Alfcat, Netflix doesn't like DRM lock systems, isn't that a problem? Uh, no, because there are something like Firefox can run Netflix natively on Linux now. Um, mm -hmm. and Chrome has for a while, yep. but this is where I saw this being, Hey, you can play all of your little indie games. You can play your retro games. You can watch Netflix. Like this was a really great little home entertainment device with the nostalgia of Atari, like the Atari box. Like this checks so many things. You know what? And it was and they basically just said, you know, we're going to punch ourselves in the nuts and ruin all the hype that we just gave ourselves. You know what? You know what? I'm going to call this from now on. I'm only referring to this from now on as the Atari fuck you. <laughs> Sorry, fuck you. It's the well, Atari see, fuck what you. What I think they tried to do is I think that they tried to appeal to normal people that would just have this under their box. And then they also tried to appeal to enthusiasts that were, you know, going to hack into this thing and do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. And they unfortunately showed it to those two groups of people like test groups and the enthusiasts were like well this isn't good enough for being an enthusiast and the people that were like oh well we just want to casually play this this is a little too complicated for us we just want like three buttons and a remote so uh which i mean is kind of what you get but i don't know maybe they're just they landed somewhere in the middle and they're yeah they're straddling rather than rather than go. committing they're straddling to both sides yeah i i can yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I would have bought it. Pseudo would have bought it. I know at least three of the people in the Discord group would have bought it. I think that if that sample size alone, we've got like four or five people who would have bought it. I think you might have found it to be quite a success. Um, I really do. Yeah. We might never so, know. Any, they're, they're... Yeah, I was going to say, all, uh, any enthusiast, uh, almost all enthusiasts that I know would have bought it, like almost yeah. no matter what, not even knowing the specs. So. Yeah. I, was, I didn't know the specs. And I was intent on coming home that day and purchasing it. I was like, that was my plan. Um, so yeah, I was just like, there aren't. I'm not. I'm not exactly like like a free spender, but like this is something I was like. It sits in my tele. It looks neat. It's Linux. It's a full Linux box. Very worst case scenario. I had a nice little compact unit PC I could take around. Um, so yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, so so Alvcat's like, what does this do that a really long cable or two to your TV can't do from your computer? Nothing. I mean, this this, but yeah. this, no one, a standard, normal, regular, average, whatever you say, person. Isn't going to connect their computer to their PC. Spousal or to their TV. approval factor. Nah. This, on the other hand, is tiny. It's out of the way. It, you know, it still ticks that nostalgia box if you really want that. But it's the idea of a home media PC that's just this tiny thing that sits there. And yeah, spousal approval factor where you really don't see it. And it was this whole idea that they were creating this UI that you can use from a controller that's super easy. Like if you've ever used um, like a console and gone to Netflix or YouTube, it's going to be that easy. Or Roku, it's going to be that easy built on top of completely open but Linux. I would, well, I, I think, think it's funny that they have uh, the guy <laughs> using like an Xbox controller on the picture. But that, that's and what you could do though. Controller for, but their, like their a... controller was specifically for retro gaming. Um, they said from the oh, start you should use an Xbox right, controller. Right. There was like, there has been really like, use whatever you like. We don't give a shit. You know, we're not trying to sell your controller. This is what we've got, but you don't have to have it. Um, 
I think that there's a lot to be said. I mean, like my living room isn't a geek den like my office is. Like, like this place. I mean, you've seen you've seen my sky cam in the office here. It's fucking. It's a it's a state, man. This this place is like a it's like a geek shrine. But um, my living room doesn't have any of that. I have a Steam Link under the, like like um, Velcro to the wall behind the TV where it's out of sight, and I have a Switch like a Nintendo Switch docking station. My living room is not a shrine to geekdom, and I couldn't realistically, without spending a lot of money on a nice case or hiding the case, I couldn't put a PC in that room without it feeling at like an out of place experience. But a wireless keyboard and mouse or one of those yeah. desk things, you know those desk like desk pal things where you can you get like a keyboard and mouse all on one little like tray put on your lap. Put that down the side of my armchair, fucking one of them under the TV. I, I could quite easily see it fitting into my living room a lot neater for a reasonable price than a building a PC that looks the part and does the things yeah. it wants to do. So yeah, for me it was yeah, value. Yeah. Aesthetically, yeah. that box is yeah. On point. That thing looks fucking, so nice. It's like porn, yeah. isn't it? It's fucking beautiful. It really is. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't. Uh, well, Alfcat says I don't use my TV at all these days, which is a bit of a shame. It's good TV led. Yeah, I, I have the same. I've got a TV on this wall here. You can see it when I use the Skycam thing. Um, it's like it's a huge TV. I rarely use it. I'm thinking about um, use it as a fourth monitor, just because why the fuck not? But uh, I'm, I'm in the same boat, mate. Well, I think most of us are. TV's dying off. The, the concept of a living room TV is just becoming a thing of the past. But, but yeah, that. and again, it's, it's, it's the whole idea to me of the reason they can do something like this, even though they might not be now, is because Linux has gotten so good and has gotten so much support. So even if Atari Box doesn't eventually come out, someone else can take this idea and run with it, again, with very low level to entry. I'd and, agree with that. We'll I, see where it goes. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully it is just a delay and they are coming out with it, not just a tease. I'd like to we'll knock see. off knock off the design because it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, uh, on to the next item. Um, GloriousEggRoll.tv. Um, there's a post on Reddit I've put in the show notes, but Glorious Egg Roll's right on Netflix's website. Glorious Egg Roll has flat packed League of Legends. Merry Christmas is the title of his blog. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi, Al. How are you, by the way? <laughs> hey, look at that. Look I, at that. What yeah, the fuck? Here, Perfect the, timing the as well. Kid. Well, and that's uh, when I saw this, I didn't even realize it was Glorious Egg Roll yeah, that no. did this. It doesn't <laughs> surprise me at all. But this Glorious Egg Roll, when I saw this in my RSS feeds, I was like, holy shit. I don't play LOL. This is awesome, though. This is what I want flat pack for. But now that you're yeah. here, great work, Glorious Egg Roll. Holy crap. Sorry. Go ahead. Hey. Uh, yeah. High five, um, bro. Yeah. I, I saw I saw the thing on um Reddit because someone in the chat in the LGG yesterday popped in and talked about it and I didn't realize it was egg roll either. And then uh, and then I ended up looking on Reddit like, oh what's that then? Let's have a look at that on Reddit. And I went to Reddit, I was like, hmm and you know when like you get to know someone from the way they type, from the way they structure sentences? Um it's called a fist in case for those of you that are wondering. But yeah, you get to recognise someone's someone from the way they type. Uh, I'm not that with egg roll because I've read so much of his stuff. No, no, seriously, it's called it's called the fist, the way you type with your fist, it's a thing. I didn't want to say that anyway. Um, I read a lot of Sherlock uh -huh. Holmes. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the um, I read that. I was like, this seems familiar. I was like, ah, looked at the username. Went straight to the website where I thought I'd get a better explanation of it. And yep, as promised, everything you need to do it right here. I'm going to be testing the shit out of this later, Egg Roll. I don't even play the game, but I want to see it running. I want to see it works. Um, looking, <laughs> looking forward to it. Now Flatpak Dota 2. Yeah, that'd be, were you yeah. Playing, were you so playing that last useful. night? Glorious egg roll. Sorry, I mean to totally. But were you playing the flat pack last night? Oh, great question. Yeah, I mean it's gonna take him a minute to answer because of the delay. Yeah, but I yeah, I, looking at this, like I already see the first the first response is like, hey, can you do StarCraft two next? And then there's someone else like, hey, can you do this game? And then someone again, this is what this is what I was hoping to see. It, I don't care if it's flat pack or snap or app image or whatnot, but this is what I see it for. Someone says, oh my, flat pack and snaps are going to solve the whole configuring one drama once for all. Mm. This is awesome. And sure enough, glorious egg roll said, yeah, that's part of the reason why I did that. But I, I would love to get Glorious Eggroll on here to talk about this specifically because I want to know like how difficult it was. He's already said that the poor performance is not great, but does he actually – I mean you can answer if you want, Glorious Eggroll, but do you actually see this as uh, an alternative – to being to built Lutris. into something like Lutris yeah. that you pull straight from Lutris or that you pull straight from Flathub. Because that... Say, uh, as a proof of concept, this is... Uh, 
even if it's doesn't not super optimized even as a proof of concept it's just yeah um as a while egg while we wait for egg roll to catch up with the uh the 30 second delay lord galt in chat says sorry to be off topic but what software do you guys for video conferencing um we use the video feed from um discord directly we capture it using obs um, and all of the scene changes you've seen are all done with a numpad mind where I just tap the scene change to change scene. There is nothing here that's not been like done on Linux directly. We don't have a Windows machine hiding in the corner, if that's what you're thinking. And we certainly Linux. don't fucking use Skype. Yeah. <laughs> and we just certainly don't yeah, or get Skype no. or Skype for yeah, we don't use, <laughs> we use We use Discord because it's like closed source, which is shitty, but it's massively like... The level of market saturation well. Discord has. It's fucking everyone I know has Discord at this point. It's just there aren't many people who are holding out for it because it just works so well. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, 80 frames a second on a 1050 rig, though. Yeah, it's not ideal, is it? Um, I was going to say, Glorious Eggroll did answer us. He said that uh, he wasn't actually playing with it last night because the Mesa version of Flatpak is yeah. too old for his Vega, his brand new card. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. He does say that it works really well on his 1050 rig, though. That's cool. Um, I'm going to try this. Just like I'm still trying to get like Snap to install in Arch because Snap Git won't compile on my machine. So as soon as that's fixed, I'm going to try your other tip, which is the uh, Flatpak version of Steam with all the libraries and stuff. Is it Snap? Sorry, the Snap version of Steam or libraries. But for some reason, every time I try to install Snap, it's like no, fuck you. So there's that. Um, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> I'll get to that eventually. Right. Yeah. This is and again, we've said it so many times in the past. Egg rolls. If you're not a regular reader of Egg Rolls blog, I have got it added into my RSS feed. Egg Rolls blog is like there's nothing there that's not worth reading. Even if you don't play LOL, this whole process is built here. This is how you write a tutorial. You assume your audience is capable of understanding basic stuff. You don't give them shit they don't need to know, and you put commands nice and clearly. It's 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 great. Well, and and this is how it should be done. And we should all thank uh, Glorious Egg Roll because even before this, he did a lot of work with Lutris. He's he's done videos before showing you how to run games. It, yeah. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is why Linux is going to be successful and yep. is always going to be around because of folks like Glorious Eggroll that invest their time and energy and make it easy for morons like me to understand and do. So Glorious Eggroll, massive props to you, sir. Good work. Yeah, Eggroll, you're to egg... just continue to mm -hmm. sing the praises of him. But uh, yeah, this uh, Glorious Eggroll is literally the reason why I know how to install Arch or really know a lot about Arch. So. His guide's great, isn't he? His guide's great. Is he written a guide for that? It's great. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Really good. It's better than the Arch Wiki, actually. Um, Egg Roll, are you in my Discord server? Because that's probably the best place to do that. So it's public. Um, we'll talk later, though. We'll talk well, tomorrow now because I'm going to see Star Wars after this. Um, yeah, yeah. He's we love that. you, Egg Roll. We love you, Egg Roll. I can't check now because I can't. If I change this camera scene, it'll, like, it'll, it'll, well, it'll, it'll, it'll do this, which is wrong. So, yeah. Um, Good work there, Egg Roll. Great stuff. Uh, next thing on the list is Keep Talking and No One Explodes um, is now available on Linux. This is now a Linux game. Yay! Um, did you guys, are you guys familiar with Keep Talking No One Explodes? There we go. It seems like, it seems like a pseudo game. Pseudo game. I, I've, I've wanted to play this game for ever since I discovered that it came out. It's just, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of friends in the real world. So... <laughs> <laughs> You don't no, you don't need it. You don't need a yeah, friends in the I mean you could do it you could do this via Discord. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I think that'd be pretty, like but like I said, it, or like Hex said, it'd be I, yeah, it's really fun. I think if you print out all the pages and then make the actual like binder and everything like that. So Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. This is a great game. I've seen I've seen this game before and it's funny to watch other people play it. I would never want to play this. I'm more into calming, relaxing, laid back kind of things now. I have enough drama <laughs> in life in general. And this would just like <laughs> just I'd probably have a heart attack it. during this. It I was played... pretty intense watching. Uh, I watched Cheeseness play it the other night. Yeah. it was pretty intense. I think we got it down to it's like right at 19 seconds, and they were just like, ah. Oh. So it was pretty. I'd like. Yeah, I'm gonna print out the manual for this, right? Yeah, and I'm gonna book buy. I've got a book buy. I'm gonna print it out. I'm gonna bind it. I'm gonna make it look like a proper fucking manual, right? And then I'm gonna get one of those confetti explosives, right? And I'm going to put the confetti <laughs> explosive right on my fucking desk, right? And I will promise the audience that if we don't explode the bomb, I'm going to push the button to fire the confetti explosive. The moment it hits zero, I'm going to smack the confetti explosion, right? That and would I think it'd be, be hilarious. Brilliant, That'd because be I do not want confetti all over my office. So I think oh, it'd be, a, yeah, it'd be such glitter. an incentive. A, yeah, something a fucking, yeah. Bomb. Just... yeah. Yeah, glitter, the herpes of oh the craft world. Yeah. They're trying I'm... to ban that here. <laughs> 
it, yeah, it's, it's a, a pol- it's a pollutant, but hex. Yeah. That is amazing what you just said. Yeah. What and did you call glitter? The herpes of the crafting world. Uh, craft herpes. That's, that's great. <laughs> that's, it's true. Yeah. Because you can't get rid of it. Once you've got glitter on you, that's where it lives now. You're, you're going to be glittery for the rest of your life. Um, Forever. But yeah, I'm just, I just want it on the desk, like in camera view. And then if we don't, the moment that hits zero and it goes bomb, I just go smack without thinking. And I get glitter or f- confetti. Fucking every, And I will be cleaned up for weeks, right? So I've got a big fucking incentive not to, not to fuck this up and i think that'd be the best way to play it where you actually genuinely give a shit about disarming the bomb right like you genuinely really fucking want to disarm it um and it's it'd be just lo- like a cage with a snake that you're like locked in yeah so but no i mate, it, just glitter, like and the snake comes a out. confetti bomb or a glitter bomb in my office would be just as fucking bad <laughs> it's just me i would not be uh, that would not be fun but uh on some level everyone in chat would be like fail 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 that like <laughs> But yeah, that'd be that'd be that's the way to do it, and that's what I want to do. But again, that'll be like that'll be like an anniversary stream or something. It won't be a regular stream. That'll be something for when I'm for when I've got something to celebrate. And it's worth the risk for a laugh, you know. But yeah, keep talking about explodes. The idea, the for those of you who don't know, we haven't actually explained the game. Is one person has a manual and a microphone, and they listen, and the other person listens on a voice call, right? And the person with the manual and the microphone. As, like they'll go, what you see, and you'll go like I'm seeing a, a box with a hole button and a, a little gritty thing and some and three wires, and they have to flip through the manual to find because the bomb's got many different configurations. Each module is modular, so like how the modules interact is one thing, but you have to flip the manual. And go, okay, I found the module with the hole button. Okay, here's what we have to do here, you know, and you have to disarm each module to disarm the entire bomb. Um, and there's things like it's worded specifically designed to confuse you like go if the second wire from the left is green and the third wire from the right is white please go to subsection a section b line four and you have to sort of like go well that's there you sort of have to like but the idea is you're saying to the because you can't see the bombs so you're like okay what colors have you got and the idea is that it's supposed to be frantic because you've, you've literally got a countdown going on um it's supposed to be amazing in vr as well because you can manipulate everything but um there's one point in the manual where it's like you have to check the reference number on the bottom of the bomb while it's counting down. Um, so the whole thing is ridiculous. But I think you have to really immerse yourself in it. You, know, you have to like really sort of not want the bomb to go off in order to enjoy it. Otherwise, it's just going to piss you off. Yeah. Wanna, yeah. well, it's also, I've seen people play it where uh, they split up the manual so that yeah. uh, different, like there's that three people. Fun, yeah. Part of two the manual, pages, yeah. Uh, so not everybody has a complete version of it. Oh, I've seen yeah, it played like that before too. Yeah, yeah Hex, cool. play this instead of Rento Fortune, please. <laughs> Fuck you, Rento's a masterpiece. Fucking Rento Fortune's a masterpiece. Look at this bomb. This is ridiculous. I love it. I fucking love this. I love the idea this of this game. This is such a genius idea, like, as a game, just in general. It's just so smart. So genius. <laughs> Cyrus is like, I'm down for this. Yeah, I bet you fucking are, Cyrus. You'll fuck me on purpose to watch my confetti go off. <laughs> so this is like no you're the last person that earth like, if i do this i'm doing it with cheese because he like understands words and things and probably won't <laughs> and probably won't enjoy making my office explode where cyrus will be like yeah cut the red wire fuck you <laughs> just you know so yeah and don't even pretend you wouldn't cyrus i know you you'd fucking you do work really hard for one game to get me to think you was on my side then you'd be like now cut the blue wire boom <laughs> just, you, fucking, you would you know you would i couldn't trust you for that and i would watch and love every yeah. second of that yeah i'd get the only person i trusted is his cheese i tell you yeah straight glitter can into the face yeah, he's already, oh he's, he's already trying to bomb. help you oh Conf- my gosh yeah, he's trying to help you set I this can't... up X. oh my gosh look he really has he really fucking has four pound i'm gonna order that i'm ordering that after the show yep yep i'm ordering that I'm going to point it right oh. at my head hanging above. So when I pull the coil, it just shoots me in the head with the confetti. I'm going to do it. Well, you know, you can send people like glitter bombs in the mail, right? Like, it's like a little, it comes um, in like an envelope just regularly. Right. Envelope. You've just used that the word mail. Legal. You've just used the word mail and bomb in the same sentence on live stream. There is no chance this, this stream is getting tagged as anything other than No, no, it's, this is, it, it's, a, it's America. <laughs> oh, so, you're, yeah, I'm not in America. America. Freedom of speech. Yeah, We're right. allowed to say whatever we want. We don't have that? we don't have that in England. There's no freedom of speech in England. That's that's it's like we just we can't say anything. We're not allowed to speak at all. Um, not allowed yeah. to speak. No, yeah. no, not allowed to speak at all. Um, yeah. 
Uh, also, the next item is Chromebooks. Okay, this is one that Sudo is going to school us on, I reckon. Chromebooks and Office 365 together will change the Windows laptops. Will challenge Windows laptops, even. Um, is this going to change the landscape, Sudo? Is bundling uh, Chrome, uh, like Chromebooks and Office 365, going to devalue Windows as an operating system like we're hoping? I would think so. I mean, that's one of the big things that keep people on Windows, especially look at... Look at um, um, the hell's their name in germany that, that that's switching back from windows or that's Munich. switching back to windows yeah. yeah yeah because of uh incompatibility incompatibilities in software i mean google has a massive amount of the market now with chromebooks especially in schools and the fact that they're kind of forcing microsoft because that's what this is microsoft sees a way to make money without being able to inflict damage they're basically giving in to Chromebooks and saying, hey, we see Chromebooks as a valid threat, but you know what? We want a piece of that pie. Here's our software to run on your systems. And for those that don't know, Chromebooks are Linux. They're, you know, they're, it's the Linux kernel. And now it's not full-fledged desktop Linux. They kind of strip things out. But I'm guessing there won't be a very big hop, skip, or jump from this to being able to run it, you know, on Linux. Now, Office... Are they talking about? I don't know if they're even talking about the web version. I think that they're talking about Office 365. Yeah, the client. This, yeah, this is well. This is like where the article is coming. I've read a couple of articles, and this article talks about a client, but there's another article that talks about the web service. I think it's going to be a thin client. I think it's going to be a um, like a web client thing with a lot of the I offline functions available. Too. Yeah, um, I think this is where the confusions come from. Um, but I think it will be a very thin version of the client, but it will be a desktop application, essentially. Um, I, I think this is no way this is a bad thing. Cause, I mean, I, as much as I love LibreOffice and as much as I love all the other solutions, um, as someone who works with Excel, like, daily, there's nothing beats Office. I mean, nothing nothing beats Excel. Trader. Excel really... Well, I'm sorry. I, mean, I have to do it for my job. But Excel, is, <laughs> Excel really is the best application Microsoft have ever made. I mean, Excel 2010, yeah. it, like, onwards, is just fucking beautiful. Um and if if i you know and if i had to use a laptop for work or if i had to bring work home with me more i'd probably be using the lead chromebook with office 365 on it i could see a situation where i could end up doing that um so yeah i, I for me i can see why it's good but i'm not sure how many people go i'm stuck on windows because of office is that a thing people say is that a thing that people care about I'm I, sure I don't think are. that that could even be a thing anymore since, I mean, literally all of their services are an online service now. You don't even really need to well, have uh... Well, no, I mean, like, you can't run macros inside Excel 365 or, like, the web version, but you can on the local version. So there are wow. certain use cases where the thin client would be advantageous, but uh, I've never heard of anyone just sounds, saying, I'd really like to move operating like system. But... Do, sounds like you should, you should do a podcast on how much you love Microsoft tax. <laughs> I could do a fucking podcast about to, about Excel. I swear <laughs> to God, I could do a podcast every week with Hex's Excel tips and never run out of content. Um, I could even do an entire podcast outline all the bugs I've found that they won't let me. They won't let me fucking file. How about that for you? <laughs> Office Bugcast. That could be fun. But uh, yeah, seriously, it's, it's, it's cool. It's, it's a good thing, I think. I, I think to it's... ask you guys something. Uh, have you guys noticed that instead of saying that like on products like out in the world now, uh, have you guys noticed that things start, they're starting to say Windows, Mac, and Chrome OS instead of Windows, Mac, or, Lin or sometimes they have Linux support, but now it just says Windows, Mac, Chrome OS. doesn't usually say Linux or that. anything anymore. I don't go I've outside. I've I've seen it at such an alarmingly increasing rate like lately that it's like it's like wow all right so now I feel like everyone is going to associate just Linux with Chrome OS now. No, so well they don't know Linux is Chrome OS. They don't know that Chrome yeah. OS is Linux though. So that's, and that's why. And that's that's not a new thing. I mean, back when Ubuntu, back when Canonical created Ubuntu, they never referenced Linux, and everyone took that such as as a huge offense because end users don't you know they don't connect with Linux. They would connect to the distros and i'm not really worried about yeah. that because even if things come specifically to chrome os the idea to get it to jump to linux is much 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 closer than something like i'm on windows now i need to get a wine wrapper and then i'm a flat pack that and i'm going to give it to people that way or so uh, i'm i would rather have it come to chrome os and then someone's like yeah we want this on linux and then they're like oh well it technically is so let me just <laughs> by the way it already is 
Yeah. I think this is going to affect Mac's uh, market share way more than the Windows market share, to be honest. I think most people, oh, yeah. I think Windows is a gamers platform for a lot of people. I think people who work in offices and stuff are already like using Chrome OS and stuff a lot of the time. Um, I think this is going to eat into Mac's share of the market way more than people realize. Because like, why buy a MacBook Air when you can buy a Chromebook now to do everything you want? Because a lot of people want to browse the web and use Office. Um, I like I said, I've never heard someone say specifically they're stuck on Windows, but they've definitely bought laptops to use it. So maybe think the more I think about well, it, the more like, I'm thinking about it now. The more I think about it, the more I think actually maybe yeah. Um, but I'm not. I'm well, not sure. I mean, it's going to dig into You've it literally bit. just said yeah. that you're stuck with Windows because yeah, for that's your what daily I'm saying. Driver. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, no, what me? No, I'm not stuck. At, I'm stuck at Windows at work. But uh, they're not going to change their office. Well, that's what I mean for your for your yeah. daily work driver. So you're yeah. literally stuck with Windows because yeah. of this, and maybe this can maybe. help you. Yeah. Get rid of that. I mean, I'm sure your um, IT. Yeah, it's one of them. Initially, you, but... initially, my initial response when I very first looked at it before thinking about it was just like, no, it's not going to matter. But yeah, the, I'm talking myself into it now. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm seeing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sold on this. This is a good idea. This is a good thing. And <laughs> I do. Thing. Do any of us hate Microsoft? I mean, like we hate Windows. Yes. As a, but do we hate Microsoft as a company? Are we really? Yes. Do we really? I don't have any feelings about Microsoft as a company at all. I hate, I don't like Windows. Like I don't because I, th I think it's a bad product. But I don't really give a shit about Microsoft. I don't think about them at all, to be honest. I, don't, I just don't have any feelings. I use OneNote at home. That's good. Um, I guess I get lucky enough to not have to like Windows is just like there for me. I haven't used Windows in probably like eight years, and it's just because I haven't really had to. I haven't had a need or a purpose to have Windows at all. Yeah on any computer that i use i mean it's not a linux master race thing it's just if i had to use it Windows is, at some point i guess i'd <laughs> use it but yeah i mean it's i just I've, I've never had a use case of where i've had to use windows so i've just always used linux yeah that's, that's good to hear i like this i like that saying that's a good thing to hear um but right so before i talk myself any more into buying a chromebook um <laughs> let's uh let's just have a look at the next item which is sudo explain this to us AMD GPU Pro 17.5 now bundles open source components, lets you mix and match your drivers. Can you explain this to us, please? Yeah, that's super awesome, is that you can now download, uh, I mean, I guess it's more of, you're not fully downloading AMD GPU Pro 1750, but it's basically like a, a buffet where there's, uh, I believe there's going to be a launcher and it's like, hey, what kind of graphics do you want to go for? Do you need... Uh, high quality, you know, uh, artistry stuff. Well, then you're going to want AMD GPU Pro. Click here and it installs that. It's like, well, I want gaming. Oh, okay. Well, then you want the open source driver. Click here. By the way, do you want Vulkan? Then we're they're open sourcing their Vulkan driver. And then it seems like RadV is going to stay around. So it's like, do you want the open source RadV or do you want our Vulkan driver? It's, it's more of a um, go ahead and install this. And then we'll help walk you through what you want to run. Um, and I think that this is awesome in that AMD is kind of grasping onto this and, and trying to hold people's hand and walk them through the complexities of the current state of the AMD GPU driver situation. Yeah, so really this is more, this isn't really aimed at, at, at us as more technical Linux users. This is probably the people, that, like my first Linux install, uh, probably going to benefit more from this, are they? Because I would think that most people already know which drivers that they want without a menu telling them. Um, or am I misunderstanding? Yeah. Okay. No, no. I mean, I think I if mean... you're going to use that in the first place, you're kind of going to have an idea of what you wanted a little bit. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. And so... and I mean, right now there actually isn't a more difficult than that. But yeah, instead of it, I mean, it, there's also I guess also they're going to be shipping the newer packages as well. So something like Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu 17, um, what are we on? Oh, 17.10. It has an older version of Mesa. Supposedly something like this is, they're going to ship like the propri this proprietary bundle and be like, okay, well, walk me through what I want. Um, it's laying down code to make this whole thing easier to do. And it's, it's more official than just the, you're already running the open source open source drivers this is amd getting in and being like yeah we're gonna let you pick through us that's that's i, yeah. I, I think that's it's a good thing so can we just Honestly, take a moment before... can we just take a moment there for egg roll saying that rad v is probably just going to borg the amd vulcan drivers and then like two seconds later felt the need to explain what borg meant come on dude look what stream you're in you're fine you're good <laughs> yeah. don't yeah. worry about it it's okay well <laughs> so, so okay and... 
to to that point amd again as i said is is opening finally after what has it been two years or something like that they said they were going to do it they're open sourcing their vulcan driver now most people that don't realize if you've been running vulcan with the open source drivers or the open source yeah open source drivers you've been using uh david airley's uh rad v and while rad v seems to have better performance in some issues in some situations it is not actually feature complete so Right now, they're not really direct competitors. They're trying to do the same thing, but they're at different stages. Like his is better at some things, while the the AMD Vulcan driver is actually more feature complete. That's fair. That makes sense. So yeah. it would it would be awesome if AMD was like, hey, it would be awesome in my opinion if Glory if Gloria Segwell was right and AMD was like, hey, David, come work with us. We'll integrate all of this together and have just one kick ass driver. Yeah, and uh, Sam's also saying that RadV is already most of the level of the official Vulcan driver and integrates with the existing system. So yeah, maybe this is maybe this is just them going, there's already better shit out there, let's just let them fucking do that and save ourselves the work. Which honestly, if that's how companies get, they're like, just open source it and we haven't got to do the drivers ourselves. I'm fine with that. That seems fine. <laughs> it just seems like a That'd fine so way to do it. That'd be so yeah. great, yeah. But um the next item though is and this is related somewhat, is Qualcomm mentions Vulcan two and what we would expect, suspect of Vulcan 2.0. Now, this is basically from what Qualcomm are saying. Um, Qualcomm, I should say. I keep saying Qualcomm like a duck, like Quackcom or something. Wow. Um, they use the word Vulcan 2 in some, uh, in, some, in some specification stuff for Snapdragon 845 mobile platform. Um, is this them accidentally leaking that there's a Vulcan 2 in the works, or is this just a misunderstanding? I don't know. But I felt like the the article that goes through it was interesting enough that I've put it in the show notes for you guys to read. This is another one I think yeah, you need to explain to us. Well, this is, as I said earlier, version numbers usually are completely arbitrary and are just designed by the software designers to, to say what milestone they're currently at. If this is real, which it's it's all speculation right now, and mm-hmm. I think Michael does a good job basically saying... Which is you rare. Know, reached out to... Yeah, he read. <laughs> to be fair, he does good work usually. He just tries to drum up traffic with mm. with some clickbaity head titles. But but he did reach out to Kronos apparently about this. And they said, no no, we're like we're just we're moving on. This there's nothing to announce. Um, but the fact that Qualcomm has to could mean Vulcan two could mean that there's a big code drop about to hit. Uh, where they decided to to iterate the version number, or it could be that someone typoed something but it doesn't change it doesn't change the fact that vulcan still day by day is getting better but if they have a big announcement to come out with vulcan 2 that's pretty exciting in my opinion yeah and and don't misunderstand vulcan 2 isn't like xbox 2 um vulcan 2 would be vulcan 2.0 just like when the linux kernel has a version increase it doesn't mean you have to bin all your graphics cards or bin all the driver work it's not a separate product it's 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 just the it would just be saying that they've hit a 2.0 milestone um so that also like vulcan to this this headline again is typical michael lobel um it's not exactly clear what he's saying here anyway but yeah they're, they're not saying vulcan 2 as a separate product like we're, we're bidding vulcan we're now doing vulcan 2 um they're not saying anything like that it just would be 2.0 version number to be clear vulcan colon the second yeah vulcan the second coming i um, was just gonna say that <laughs> the vulcaning the s- I, in the show notes, I call this the I'm Spock Spock. Like, I call this the Spock Spock conundrum because <laughs> there's Spock, two Vulcans. Spock. Yeah, because there's two Vulcans. Um, so yeah, moving on from this one then, uh, effortlessly, we have again another Pharonix. Pharonix has done some good fucking work this month. Pharonix have really done well this month because we usually we don't link to any Pharonix because it's clickbaity shit. But uh, GIMP, this is a very again, this is probably a very quick one, more of interest to me than anyone else. Um, GIMP 2.9.8 releases with on canvas gradient editing and Wayland support. The thing I took away from this is Vulc- um, Vulcan GIMP doesn't have Wayland support. Didn't know that. Didn't realize that was a thing. But apparently GIMP has Wayland support now. Yay. That's good, right? Like Yay. dust balls. I use, I use Critter because I'm not as technically apt Get out. as most artists. <laughs> I, I fire up an art program once every nine months well, I a year. I um as you know I do all my own artwork for the chat. <laughs> I can't even say it to the straight face. Uh, no, I do a lot of thumbnails which involves copying and pasting stuff. If I do have to do any art whatsoever, GIMP is the only tool I have any level of competency in. But uh, usually I just tag Cybris in a tweet or something, and then it magically happens. Um, but <laughs> but he uses GIMP. 
So I still maintain that <laughs> that GIMP is important. It's an important part of the process is GIMP. Um, yeah, but uh, I, I'm surprised, more surprised. The, the thing I wanted to point out here is GIMP didn't have Wayland support. There are so many applications I use every day that wouldn't work on Wayland. It does make me wonder if I'm if we're actually anywhere near as ready as we think we are. No, that. well, that's not that's not 100 percent correct. There's there is a Wayland to X11 shim in there, so. <laughs> Saying that it won't work. Is, okay, so is it's a going through a wrapper. It just doesn't have native support. So it's going through a wrapper to get to Whalen, which means there's going to be slight performance degradation. Um, I would say. Yeah. I think this gives more credit to Whalen, though, in that applications are sure oh, enough yeah. slowly mm. moving over. But as as I've said, I've I've personally noticed some big performance hits with Wayland. Uh, so I wouldn't really recommend it yet in some application or some. Distros do use it out of the box. Ubuntu 17.10, Fedora, uh, they default to Wayland. So if you're experiencing some kind of performance issue, an application that used to work that doesn't anymore, switch to X11 uh, by logging out, changing to X11, then logging back in. Oh, but, Samsung yeah. has been using Wayland for about two weeks and GIMP does work in Wayland. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Yeah, so it just it's it's a, a Wayland X11 shim that allows you to work it. They're adding <laughs> native support. What? Nisui's, is Nisui's, I'm laughing no, no, at Nisui's, Nisui's comment. Nisui is like, Hex doesn't use GIMP, he pre uses mpaint via wine. Yep, I, use, yeah. I actually use paint.net, um, well, obviously. We, we know, that he's, we know that he's a Microsoft shill because he always talks about Excel, so really he's I just trying to... I fucking love Excel! Uh, I fucking love uh, Excel because there is no paint. product, there is no spreadsheet application on this planet as good Our, as Excel. Are Not you going to use the next are you going to use the next topic to bounce off and talk about how Edge is superior to all browsers? Edge is the superior browser for getting another browser. <laughs> if you're yes. on Windows and you need a browser, Edge is the best way to get that browser. I go, haven't sword. heard that one in years actually. It's a fact, it's a fact. Like um, that Rick yeah. and Morty meme with the butter robot. It's like what is my purpose? <laughs> to get, like, to, to get butter. Firefox. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um the uh, the, uh, the, the, okay, this is what Arch Toasty added to the show notes, and I'll let him explain it as, on the fast because we're running out of time for the show. All right, so. we'll do it super fast. Super fast, uh, the tweet basically, version. Basically, um, Mozilla had a deal with Yahoo to use Yahoo as their uh, default search engine, and then they had a really savvy person write this contract that basically said that if Yahoo ever sold out and Mozilla didn't like who they sold the company to, that they're... Uh, well, all right. So there's a lot of money involved in this. Yahoo had to pay them like as almost three billion dollars, I think, uh, overall, overall total, uh, to let them use this. I mean, it's gonna be over time and stuff like that. But uh, Mozilla got kind of upset when Yahoo sold out to Verizon and was like, "Well, we don't like the person that you did that to, so we'll still take that money, but we're not gonna use you as a default anymore." Uh, and Yahoo, of course, was like, "Well, we don't like that." Uh, but it seems like it's 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 whoever wrote that contract was just like ha ha and should probably be getting a raise at this point because it's pretty solid. Uh, I mean, there's maybe a chance that the Verizon people are might find something small to do, uh, like get it in there or undo the thing. But it seems like Mozilla well, is going to be coming into a lot of money very soon, uh, or at least they'll be continuing to. So. It's just a little nice win for Mozilla, so, I think. Lawyers, lawyers being lawyers, paid to be lawyers. Yeah. So is this like, is this basically them going, "Fuck you, keep giving us money, get nothing"? Well, it's basically they're like, "Well, we don't like Verizon, and you signed this contract, so middle finger this, to you, bro." If I, like <laughs> as much as like, yeah, fuck Yahoo or fuck Verizon to be specific. Um, I kind of feel like this is like this is like this seems like some gangster shit right here. This seems like yeah, some protection right, money level shit. I'm not sure Mozilla's in the moral right here. Um, I think that's a little bit of a grey area, but it's Verizon, so fuck up, right? Am I, like, yeah, that seems to be I mean, what I'm if, yeah. if it were any less, any other sort of different company, I guess, like it would be morally, I guess, on in the grey <laughs> area, you could say. But. Uh, I guess yeah. it's or Mozilla. We can just be like, yeah, Mozilla. Yeah, and also like, egg, I like the fact Egg Roll probably said it before I said it, but yeah, because fuck Verizon, yeah. Like, like that just seems like yeah. everyone's answer. Like, it's like it's okay to extort Nazis. Nobody feels bad for them. If it was anyone else, would feel bad, but they're Nazis. And uh, in this case, it's Verizon, which you know they're the same thing, really, aren't they? Um, yeah, uh, they, Verizon can afford it. Fuck them. Yeah, I agree with that. And it's nice. Yeah. It's nice that Mozilla know this is a gamble because there might be a legal loophole. So they're gambling three hundred million on the fact their contracts are ironclad. I figure, right? So 
good yeah. luck to them for trying it and i wish them the best of I luck I would say, say. they're probably still throwing a party for the guy that wrote that con <laughs> hopefully he's got a retainer so like he gets like a couple of hundred grand a year because he wrote the contract because at 300 million he deserves a retainer to I was say, i'm contract. sure he slipped something like that in there i really hope he has because otherwise he's like <laughs> shot himself in the fucking foot with a very cheap bullet but uh that sounds cool i hope that plans out we'll have to keep an eye on that do let us know if there's any updates toasty because i'm probably not gonna read up on that because it's got yahoo in the titles and i ignore all the yahoo the yahoo are essentially invisible to me at this yeah point. i wish that they had put like a mozilla like thing yeah for the i probably would have read it that would have been yeah. a much be a much better uh thing there it's yeah. just like yahoo and everybody's does, just like Ugh. does guys I'm, I'm not sure if it's maybe it's an english thing but i don't know anyone who even knows who yahoo is anymore is it more popular in the states uh, uh, no, yeah, you know, Yahoo's like. Are, what are they doing? What are Yahoo doing now? They're sold out. Like they were, they went through whoever the last CEO was. That lady, Marissa uh, Meyer. She seemed yeah, cool. She just she ruined that company. I mean, like real bad. <laughs> to be uh, fair, I've just, I mean, I've just. Me wrong, yeah, I was gonna say it was pretty ruined yeah. by the time she got the reins for it. But I mean, it's been slowly going downhill, and but nobody uses I, Yahoo. Now anymore. this is the first time I've used Yahoo since the nineties. Genuinely, I've just gone to no, Yahoo.com and it's put me on UK.Yahoo.com. Oh. This isn't a bad landing page, actually. This is this is all right, actually. Let's be honest. The, the funny thing is, is Yahoo doesn't use Yahoo. Their search engine isn't Yahoo. It's backed by Bing. <laughs> Bing! Fuck! I'm out. Forget it. Close the page. Yeah. I'm out. Fucking gone. Never again. <laughs> burn it. Burn it with Never fire. Again. Do you know? Do you guys know what Bing stands for? Does anyone uh, know what Bing, what the acronym is? Being incredibly no. genuinely. Nihilistic. I thought this was oh. a joke, but Bing stands for because it's not Google. That's why you should use it because it's not Google. Oh, aren't they? That's cute. literally. Yeah, I was like. I'll just use this Duck, is, Duck, Go, this is this is this is from Microsoft. The people who tried to make the word "screwgold" a thing, like, come on, guys, Scroogled. you can do better. Like, yeah, like I googled it and it was bad. I got "screwgold." Ha! Aren't we cute? No, you, you're assholes. Don't use Google because it's awful. Don't use. Don't, <laughs> no, you're really assholes. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is rare. We've seen a Hackaday article in the show notes that I take it Arch Toasty gave us that. I I don't think we've ever actually linked directly to Hackaday before. Did hmm. I? Yeah, I think yes. you did. This is the accidental accident. Mean? Forgiveness comes to to GPL. Oh, this V2. is the thing that apparently I didn't understand. And yeah, Sudo told me. Uh, a Sudo, lot. give us the tweet version. Like... Sudo gives the tweet version. What? Google, IBM, Facebook, all Red Hat, all announced that they're giving um, people that abuse uh, free and open source code a window to own up to it without any repercussions, and in the future you'll be given like some leeway to own up to it and make things right and if not the hatchet falls um Is that good well, so this, what this what stemmed you... from oh i was gonna say no, that Carol. thing that you guys were talking about like a few weeks ago with the yeah uh, the um the g the, that was the the um, code of conduct the for kernel. gpl yeah the kernel code of conduct yeah yeah and then well also because it's the uh man what in the world is that all right Scratch that. Forget I said that because I can't think. Of, I can't articulate my thoughts. Correctly. Okay, so from what I'm understanding, right? So what this is, is the GPL. If you don't, so at the moment there's a bunch of companies using GPL code without fessing up or without without compliance, right? So what they're saying is, look, guys, we know you're doing it. Just fess up so it's on the table. We'll, we'll just fucking ignore this this breach. But in the future, we'll talk it through, and we're not going to be dickholes about it, and we're not going to go out of our way to be pricks about it. We'll talk it through and we'll make sure everyone's in compliance and the code will flow like water. Is that what they're saying? Is that am I understanding this right, Sudo? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's all, I there's mean, all, whenever there's a long gap with Sudo replying, I'm like, his headset's right. dropped. <laughs> oh, snap. Uh, I remember what I was going to say now. This is, yeah. uh, I, I'm pretty sure that this stemmed out of, do you remember that legal battle between, uh, I want to say it was the EFF and their legal side? Like, because they. One of them was like, yeah, the hey, software compliance, leaving. the software and, compliance center, the software freedom center, or something. Yeah, freedom yeah, I feel like this center. all came out of that lawsuit because uh, that was just a whole lot of internal drama. Yeah, company. Uh, and then also it ended up spilling out and becoming a big thing because they were suing each other. Because obviously, the side that like wants for all of the convert servancy and stuff like that, they want people to fall into compliance but not get sued into nothingness in order to do that yeah uh whereas all the lawyers from the other side were like dude that's how we make all of our money is by suing people uh so you're gonna take that away from us so apparently uh you know 
there's been some other background stuff, but this is what I feel came of that. Yeah. Right, and this is, yeah, this is also, again, I, I agree with you. I feel like it, it was sparked off of the Linux kernel issue where one person committed one line of code and then was going around suing people. This is, it, yeah. it, I mean, this is basically saying, guys, we give you code. We want to help protect you, but we also want the code that you use because that's only fair. You use our yeah. code. We use yours. We'll protect you. You protect us. Yeah. Pat yourself on the back. I'll pat myself. Yeah. So yeah. this is how it works. Yeah. Lawyers being lawyers kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I love, I love this artwork that I've got at the top of this article. This is wonderful. This is, this I, is I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. All yeah. hail the Lord and savior. Yep. 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 He, yeah. And I love that. I love this line as well, where they've got a picture of him in his like monk outfit. And they're like, yes, he really dressed up like this. <laughs> Which, I'm sure those are some yeah. proprietary tractor beams there. <laughs> no, yeah. The, that, the thing that the halo that's on his head, that's an old, a very, 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 very old hard disk. <laughs> what? The, 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 the halo on his head's a hard. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It's, it's a hat. From, I was it's, looking it's at, a I was looking at like a super old hard drive. I was looking at the artwork wow. at the top. I, I wasn't seeing the, the, that one. Yeah, that is. No way. That's an old, like, what? What is that? What is that? 12 inch drive? Yeah, something like that. Okay, now that is no idea. Man, he probably, he probably invented that. He's so fucking... He invented all the stuff. And then, like, in 1979, stopped being relevant completely and then just became an advocate. But he really was an amazing coder. Probably still is. I mean, like, he was he was awesome. But, you mm. know, anyway. Um, the next item, and we're running long, so nice. we'll just breeze through these quickly. The next item... Way something long. I added today... Yeah, way long. At this point, no one's watching. We can say whatever we like. Um, very quickly, Caden, Caden Live Video Editor... They're releasing the last patch for the existing code base, and then the next patch moves most to the new code base. Um, this is interesting, and it's nice they're supporting the old code base for so long. Um, very interesting article from OMG Ubuntu. Nice, straight to the point, covers all the bases you need. And if you use Caden Live, you should most definitely check out the new code base, which is available as an app image. Did I cover that? that did, I, did I cover all that, guys? I think I covered that. Um, and again, we'll just end with these two rather than going on anymore, but... Um, the, uh, if you're interested, Pharonix have done this, this bunch of articles uh, about happenings in 2017. They've done Wayland, Exorg, and a few other things. But basically, they break down all the articles they've posted into like these little blurbs, and they can click on it for the full article. And it just covers how much activity has happened. The two that interested me was KDE. You don't realize how much no, like newsworthy stuff has happened for KDE in the last 12 months. And the same with Exorg. Yeah, yeah, super popping this year. Yes, KDE's killed it this year. I mean, I'm on KDE full time now. KDE, KDE yeah. mobile. That was uh, quite oh, that the experience. Was the dark time. Yeah, the dark time. Um, already updated the repos. Phones, yeah. It still won't turn off by itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, like, and then they also the one for Xorg with a breakdown. Because people are all about Wayland, but there's still shit happening with Xorg, which I respect the hell out of. Because even they must know their days are numbered now. You know? Yeah. But, uh, they're, still, they're still doing the work, which I appreciate. Because... To be honest, why ain't there yet for most of us? I don't think. I don't think that's fair to say. And uh, if you are yeah, so, I mean, what else are you gonna do? If you've been working on something for so long and you can't really transition out of it, yeah. just keep working on it. <laughs> that's how every Windows dev feels. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's the one little article there from the uh, gnome.org blog page, some predictions for 2018, which I thought was funny. But uh, yeah, we probably we we got through it all. Pseudo, we got to the end of the show notes. Kind of. Well, we blazed through it fast, but we got to the end. But we are at like <laughs> two hours, 21 minutes. I mean, I tried, you know. I tried. We need to get rid of all this game talk to make room for the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, sorry, yeah, I added right? a lot of uh, non-game things well, to, the, uh, and, to the list and here. And to be fair, I talked about Oni for like 25 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. But that's all I had to talk about. It's fine, it was, it's a, fine. Spl it was a splendid recommendation, though. Great, uh, it's very nice, very nice. I wonder if uh, Xorg will outlive Windows. That'd be cool. <laughs> wait, let's put bets on now. But uh, yeah, this this was all right, guys. We got to the end of the show. This brings us, ladies and gentlemen, to the end of X Penguin. Um, if you have enjoyed our guest, you should check out Arch Toasty um, on Twitch, where he streams his Twitchery. Um, that's a real. I thing put none there. of my information in there. You put Sorry, none of your information in there, so no you'll find him. Just type yeah. Arch Toasty into Google. You'll find me. Or DuckDuckGo because we don't or push Duck Google. Duck <laughs> Or, or Bing, uh, or sorry. Bing, or if you want to use Yahoo.com, but, but oh. not Yahoo. Not no, Yahoo. Um, no, no. 
screw you. I'm I'm doing it in Yahoo right now. Arch Don't get screwed, guys. Don't get screwed. You love that. That's gonna stick with you. Arch Toasty. That's, you're yeah, on Twitter, Arch Toasty, and you're on Twitch, Arch Toasty. Um, for I anyone, have, for anyone who wants that link for uh, for the, the results on um, on Yahoo, there's there the link, are. guys. All relevant <laughs> links. The link, all, all relevant right links. There. No way. It's actually you. It found on. It actually found you on um on Twitter as well. Look at that. I searched with Yahoo and got the result I wanted. What are the odds? That's that's quite Cause insane. Bing. Cause because it's Bing. Yeah. So even so, what are the odds we got what Bing. we wanted with Bing? I mean, that's like that's like that's again. Again, quite a stretch. And egg rolls back right for the end. It's my uh, my Twitter page, everybody. Yeah, it's guys, got uh, his tweets on there. Got a new icon I, in there. Yeah. Got some tweets. It's, uh, do you guys? I, before going. we go, I gotta ask you guys a question. Do you guys forget that Twitter exists for ages and then go, "Oh, Twitter's a thing," and then send like loads of tweets for the whole day and then just forget Twitter, Twitter? exists for another six months? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. I, I think if you look at my stream, all of my tweets are from my. Uh, from auto tweets dashboard. If, yeah from twitch yeah. just whatever i go on and stuff like that so that's pretty much it <laughs> president like even glorious egg rolls are used it president like wow it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. yeah <laughs> so uh, it comes to the anyway so what are you streaming this week you got any plans for this week uh Arch toasty uh oh god nice uh yeah, not really. Uh, I'm going to probably mess around with Wine. I'm going to compile Wine 3.0 and see if that makes any cool changes in any of the other games that I'm playing. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for that too. Um, so do you not plan your streams ahead? Do you just sort of like, I'll just stream on these, I'll just stream when I feel like it. That's fair. Yeah, I pretty much just do IRL and sit there and then wait for people to come to the room and then I just that's, pick a game to play. That's I want it to I be do. like, more, I would, yeah, I would love to be for it to be a little more planned stuff like that but it just ends up not ever happening that that's way that's cool uh pseudo you streaming this week uh, what nah. <laughs> what was that was that, was that... <laughs> um yeah uh so you're not streaming you not for my next birthday or... i'll get some time oh man was that why you were streaming because you but because you streamed against me one day you know that don't you you actually streamed while I was streaming the one day. Yeah. And uh I hadn't you... realized you were streaming. Yeah, yeah. I so I Cuz I have a schedule, twice. you know. <laughs> no, you don't. Schedule. Uh I streamed on Saturday and Sunday this past week cuz it was my birthday weekend and I don't know. Maybe I I I have to see how things play out. Maybe start doing like an hour or two like on a Sunday or something, but well uh, that still has to be decided. So happy happy Probably not. by the way. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there's nothing happy about it. He's got a child. There's no, there's no joy in his life anymore. <laughs> just belated. Just, just <laughs> belated. Happy birthday tomorrow, glorious egg roll. Yeah, congratulations, glorious egg roll. Survive another year in the world. Good, good for you. You're useful. Oh, we damn. hope you survive happy longer. You as well, sir. Yeah. So thank you for watching, people. If you got this far on YouTube, I don't believe you. The metrics tell me that of <laughs> one hour, fifty nine minutes, everybody turns off. Nobody makes it this far in the video. So if you made it this far in the video. Go into comments and type the word. Give me a word, guys, that proves they watched this far. Come on, a word. Um, spatchcock. Spatchcock, which is not a rude <laughs> word. Spatchcock <laughs> is what you do with a chicken. What you do is you break it open, you break its bones and lay it flat so it cooks evenly. Oh, I learned that from Arch yes. Toasty. I was so, trying to think of something normal. That was a dynamite drop okay, in there. So it, it, what if, wait, what if someone randomly typed spatchcock and they haven't watched the video? How will we know the difference? <laughs> That would yeah. be yeah. That would be what amazing. A, like that would be such a planetary alignment. <laughs> I've, sort of I've got a video from ages ago where I made like a forty-minute vlog, and I was like, just put the word like I don't know, fucking donkey in the comments or kangaroo in the comments if you got this far. And now when you get to the video, there's like five pages of the word kangaroo. And there's the occasional comment where someone's like, "What the fuck is with the comments? What is happening? <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant." <laughs> So yeah, let's hope we get a lot of spatchcocks in the comments. Thank you for coming, Glorious. Uh, thank you for coming, uh, Arch Toasty. It's been a, it's been great. I need to call you Glorious Egg Roll because I was looking at Glorious Egg Roll's name in chat then. Which again, I've got to stop doing this. And thank you to Pseudo Shred for for not dropping his mic the entire way through the show this week. First time in ages. He's just the no answer there. You just wire connected. <laughs> wire connected. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. This has been X Penguin. You can get me on Twitch as usual. You can get me on YouTube. And if you listen to this on RSS, you've missed Arch Toasty's glorious face. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good one, guys. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Pseudo to say goodbye, everybody. It's not happening, is it? it goodbye, everybody. There you go. <laughs> Pseudo just left. Bye.